Okay, hello everyone. Happy to see you all here. I see Eduardo, I see Marco, I see Danielson, Jeremy. So if you can say where are you from exactly, so that we can have a quick chat. And by the way, this is my friend, uh, Gabriel. And he, uh, he has a couple of years as a software engineer and uh, he got a really good um, progress in, in his career, really good results. And he's here with me today. So say hi to them, Gabriel. Hi guys, uh, I am very happy to have invite me uh, share a little knowledge with, with them. And how can I say, I am very happy in having this conversation with them. And go ahead, Rafael. I, I don't okay. have a lot of words for her. <laughs> for it's okay, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. So Gabriel will be here with me. And um, okay, I see the new song. He's from Peru. Nice. That's awesome. I see João from Portugal. That's awesome. Uh, okay, Marco, Eduardo. Eduardo, I know he's from Brazil. So happy to see you all here, guys. We can give a couple of minutes until we start the, the meeting, the, the presentation. Hello, Alan. Nice to see you here. Okay. Uh, okay, we, we have... Akin Neil from Nigeria. Um, we have Alan. Alan will give a talk um, after my presentation, so stay tuned to see Alan. Uh, okay, we see. I see Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy, and he's saying hi to Gabrielle. Uh, he's from Dublin. Hey, That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm from. I'm living in Dublin as well. From Brazil, but I'm living in Dublin. Nice. So the new song from Peru. Eduardo, I know he's from Brazil. And okay. Uh, I'm sorry if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Afolabi. Hello, Afolabi from Nigeria. So we have a very uh, globalized um, audience here, which is awesome. So we have, okay, Marco, Croatian from Ireland. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay. And who else? Let me see. Oh, Marco is in Manuth. That's awesome. So Marco, you are in Ireland. That's that's great. Uh, okay, we have here. Who else? Uh, Akinil from Nigeria. Um, okay, guys. So if you want to talk a little bit about your challenges, about your career challenges, we can start uh, discussing a little bit if you can uh, if you want to ask any question feel free to ask so that we can get started i think we have a good amount of people already which we can get started but if you have any question so far just uh, shoot it okay we have bruno nice so bruno pinheiro is uh brazilian but he's living in portugal awesome that's awesome nice so eduardo is from brazil as well and he's living in porto porto is awesome i've been there i love the city i have a couple of friends there it's fantastic it's beautiful uh i really like the ponte do luis if you have a, a, a chance to take a look on the internet it's a very beautiful place. So yeah, that's awesome, guys. So uh, we are here uh, for five minutes. Let's get started then. Let's talk about career. And I'm going to share my screen. Just a minute.
Okay. Can you see my screen? I guess you can because I can see it. So guys, I'm going to talk about uh, the 10 golden lessons uh, life um, that will boost your career as software developer. Okay. Oh, Thiago. Oh, that's awesome to see you here, Thiago. Yeah, Thiago is also Brazilian uh, and he's living in Lisbon. And uh, okay, let's get started then. So many people from Portugal, <laughs> that's good to see. So those are the points we're gonna discuss. Uh, so we're gonna be talking firstly about uh, dream big. I think it is important for everyone to have a big goal because when you have a big goal, you can achieve much more. Take responsibility. So basically, if anything good or bad happens in your life, you take responsibility. I know this is hard, but we're going to go deeper into that. Have a mentor because you save so much time, you know, have exponential growth. Hack your health because without health, you can't do anything. Um, have focus because if you try to do so many things, you end up doing nothing. Track your goals because if you don't see progress uh, in what you are doing, you get demotivated and you don't do anything else. Work smart and hard. What does that mean? It means uh, you to do the work that will really help you. Otherwise, you're going to do work that is useless for your career. Uh, optimize your time. Um, so how can you do that? You can do that by uh, listening to a book while you do while you commit to work. This is just one example. And deliberate practicing. So what I'm doing here with you is a little bit practice. So basically, I'm I've been giving many talks and I've been I've been uh, improving this skill. But of course, deliberate practicing can be used in any other skill. And then in the end, take action because if you don't take action, it doesn't matter. You have to take action. So the first one, dream big. So. The first thing you have to get clarity about what exactly you want in your life. So you need to think, okay, uh, what does what makes sense for my life? What will me, will make me happy? What uh, will bring me joy? You probably know a couple of things that bring you joy. Uh, and you know, in software development, there are so many things. And probably there is one thing there. There are a couple of things in software development that really motivates you, that really um, makes you um, more, uh, more joyful and you want to study more. For example, let's suppose you, you like to create high quality code. Probably this would be something that you are passionate about. Therefore, you want to work for a company where you can use those skills. So the first thing is to reflect about yourself and write down what are the important long-term goals. So you have to figure this out. And you have to also make the question to, um, about uh, why not you? So... I know that sometimes we might think, oh, but who am I to dream big? But why not you? Because if you dream big, the only thing that's going to happen is that you're going to maximize your potential and you're going to be able to help more people. Therefore, you're going to make the world better. So why not you? So instead of asking why me, why not you? Because there's no reason if you can, if you can, a dream big and do big things, you're going to be able to maximize your potential and other people's potential, which uh, brings a, a really good um, a, a really good cycle to uh, to society and uh, the world, and so you can really um, achieve what you want. And be specific about your dreams, because for example, my first dream was to work in Europe. 
And what did I do to achieve that? I basically focused uh, my uh, couple of years to study in English. And then I got experience in Brazil as a software engineer. And then I came uh, here to Ireland and then I was able to get a job. Uh, and I was only able to achieve this dream because it was specific. I knew that, okay, I'm going to go to Ireland and I'm going to get a job there. There was a couple of, there's a couple of reasons for that because here's a country where uh, the official language is English and I've been working in English well, with English already. So that would be a good uh, entrance door to me. So that was a first dream. And remember one thing, uh, which is that when you achieve one dream, there will be other dreams. And of course, nowadays I have other dreams. And that's the thing. You have uh, a big long-term goal uh, in mind and uh, you see the big picture so that you can take action and so that you can plan out your um uh, your daily actions, um, because that's the only way. You don't achieve big things uh, in one day. You achieve big things in con with consistent actions. Remember that it's uh, life is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. So if you are able to plan out your days uh, in a way that you keep doing something consistently, it doesn't need to be every single day. It just needs to be consistent. For example, I was consistent on my English classes. I was having English classes, I think, two days a week or something. Uh, and something I was doing to help me out to get better with English. I also changed everything on my computer. I was watching everything on... on uh, I was watching series in English. I was um, doing everything in English, basically. So this was a strategy I was doing to uh, maximize my learning. And this is just one example. I just want to show you that uh, it's important for you to be consistent. And I can say one thing. Uh, the, uh, at this part, uh, uh, the consistent, like he, it's very important that you haven't focused. You have to say it's not marathon. It is, it is true. Like uh, you have a, a great disgust, uh, like your body say, oh no, this is very boring and you stop these activities or you stop your dream. And try, uh, uh, how can I say, try make these things slowly with consistent. Oh, sorry, it's a little compliment. <laughs> yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah. Well, I think let me uh, compliment, uh, compliment the point from Gabriel. It doesn't mean that you have to be slow. You have to be effective as well. You have to, you have to have the, 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 the right set of strategy. You have to have this, the right strategy. Uh, doesn't, doesn't mean that you have to be slow, but you have to be consistent and you have to keep, take action in this, um, in this matter, in, 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 in whatever you decided that it is your strategy in a consistent way, consistent and effective. So you have to know, okay, by doing that in a certain time, I'll be able to do X. So, um, and sometimes you, you just have to keep doing it and you, you have to, you, you'll be sure. And, uh, I would say to you that be sure that something amazing will happen to you. If you be, if you are consistent in, 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 the, in the right things for your career, great things happen. And be ambitious. And this doesn't mean to be greedy. Be ambitious is to uh, be able to deliver more value uh, when you invest in yourself, when you become a better person. When you become a better person, you are able to deliver more value. So. Be ambitious instead of being greedy, because if you're greedy, you would uh, run over other people. And that's not acceptable. So uh, be ambitious and be able to bring more value. So take responsibility. So this is very important lesson. 
because if you don't take responsibility, you are powerless. So I know it's very tempting for us to blame external factors. And sometimes I myself, I blame, I, I try the best to not to do that. But sometimes I, I notice that I'm uh, trying to blame external factors, but then I, 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 uh, I uh, come back to myself and I say, okay, like, hey, Rafael, you are blaming external factors. You have to blame yourself. And then uh, when I make this mistake, I, I'm aware of that. And I say, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's my fault. It's not, it's not their fault. It's my fault. So it's difficult sometimes because, you know, sometimes uh, life's not fair. Um, but it's crucial, it's crucial for everyone to uh, take responsibility. Even, even when you feel that it's not really your fault. Um, there is an extreme example from a book uh, called Be Obsessed or Be Average from Grant Cardone. And he takes the take responsibility lesson in an extreme level because he talks about situation where um, you go with your car, you, you are driving with your car and you are doing everything correctly, but then a car crashes yours. And then he says that even in this case, it was your responsibility. Why? Because even though you were doing everything right, you were there right at the moment of the crash. So I know this is very extreme. You don't need to go that extreme, uh, but you do need to take responsibility in things that, okay, you can control those things. Therefore, you have to be responsible. Can give you a very simple example. Uh, you can say, oh, but I've never got promoted in my job. Uh, this is my boss fault. Like it's all his fault. It's the fault of my uh, my team and it's never you. What's the problem of that? The problem is that you are always powerless. So if you are blaming your manager, if you're blaming your team, you are powerless. You can't do anything. You can't control other people. You can only control yourself. So that's the thing. So when you want to get promoted, instead of blaming others and assuming that you are powerless, you blame yourself and you say, okay, there must be something wrong I'm doing here. What can I do different? Can I talk to my manager and ask uh, he or she if I can take some kind of action to uh, get promoted? Or uh, can I change jobs? Can I study a new technology and go to a job that I think I deserve better? So be extremely careful with uh, blaming external factors because there will be always external factors and we can make up one million excuses and not take any action. So it's very easy to create excuse, uh, but it's very important for you to keep this mindset. Okay, it was my fault. What can I do here to uh, improve the situation? So try to keep this mindset because this will give your, uh, your power back. You won't be giving powers to others. You if you, when you take responsibility, you are powerful. And avoid the mindset of complaining because the more you complain, the more negative people you're going to uh, attract for you. And then you're going to get addicted in complaining, in um, not seeing what solution you could implement for a certain situation, which is not good. So don't complain avoid, avoid complaining and think always about something you can do like this example i gave you if you get if you want to get promoted why not talking to your manager why not talking to your team members and maybe asking for feedback and see where you are making a mistake what can you do to improve what consistent actions you have to take to go to the next level because like i said to get better it's a big mistake that uh, uh, sometimes we think, oh, to get better, it takes one day. No, it's it takes it's a process. So you have to create a new strategy, and then you take action on this strategy you created. For example, let's suppose you want to learn more about microservices. 
to be able to do more uh, valuable work in your job. You create a plan. I don't know, you can find courses, you can find a book, you can find whatever kind of material you want. And then you set a very, a very simple plan. You can uh, maybe read this book uh, 10 minutes a day or five minutes a day. Or if you think it's too much, maybe uh, 10 minutes uh, one day, uh, you can do, uh, uh, read 10 minutes, the other day you don't do anything, and then the other day you read 10 minutes. Whatever works for you. So you have to elaborate a plan to get uh, the result you want. And be solution-oriented. So instead of complaining, instead of blaming others, try to see, okay, this good thing happened. I take responsibility for that. Or this bad thing happened to my life and I'm responsible for that, but this is a solution I will um, work on. And then you work on the solution, um, and then you solve the problem. So the thing you can't be is to be desperate when something bad happens in your life. I know something sometimes is very difficult because heavy stuff might happen in your life. Uh, in my life as well, in everyone's life. Uh, but try to keep calm on those times because uh, if you are, if you keep calm when things go bad, you are able to take action. Otherwise, if you are desperate, you can't take any action because you can't even think. So um, try to be solution oriented. Have a mentor. Oh. This is so important. Yeah. Uh, I say a little bit about have a mentor. Go ahead. It's, it's yes, have a mentor. <laughs> okay, so, uh, guys, yeah, go ahead. You, you can start. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Gabriel. Oh, okay. Um, I I can say many things about uh, a mentor, and I get in three points more or less, and I share my experience with mentor. And the first is, if you have a mentor, you have a, a, a sex as a network you mentor. Like Rafael is my mentor. And I have a, a sex as a, a, a person in a list with Rafael. And one example, I have a sex of Tavio Santana. I have a sex of uh, Bruno Souza. And I, uh, we can create meetings and conversation with good, uh, great persons. Right, and the chess point is very important because if you uh, have meetings with these persons, these persons remember you in the future, and if you remember, you have the probability entry in a new company or entry a new project or make any any activities in the in the world, right? And the second point is very very cool in my opinion. It's a knowledge. Uh, you mentor giving directions uh, to to learn. Like in my case, uh, I, I'm in starting my mentoring with Rafael. Uh, I was very very lost. Like, uh, oh my God, I need entry in the market, and I did my first job, but I don't know how it's starting. And I learn any no any many uh, many languages. But I don't have knowledge in one language. And Rafael said, hey, Gabriel, have a focus, have it constantly, and you get to your first job. But you need to uh, find one technology to give it this energy, right? If you give it this energy, one technology, you get uh, your first job. And Half hour is a uh, specialist in Java. I get this and they help me a lot with my challengers. Uh, it, it is this journey. And uh, um, last point, it's a very, very nice point, is educations and the recommendations. Uh, if you have conversations with your mentor or, or friends your mentor, then remember you. And this is very, very cool because 
if other persons remember you, you get good opportunities. Uh, one example uh, with my case, my first job, uh, my mentor indicated me to company and I make a process and enter the company. And this is making a totality difference in my career. Like if I don't have a mentor today, uh, it's a probability I work in, in another year in tea, very unhappy, like, oh, I didn't make this process. Like uh, working one thing I don't like, you know? And this, this point, the mentor is very, very good. Uh, you need a mentor, in my opinion, like, because the mentor share experience with you and show cases uh, and, and the new mentor uh, pass, like uh, any cases I can say here. And it is it's very good because I get experience with my mentor and my mentor will prepare to, to market. And it's very, very cool you have a mentor. Okay, that's awesome, Gabriel. And um, can you tell more, more uh, details about your result, about your career and everything? Oh, uh, yes, I, I can give you more uh, details. Uh, about my start, my career, I give you an example, I'm very lost. And with, with my mentor, Rafael, uh, we create a little plan and Create 100 videos uh, about Java, and I recorded these videos, and I get the first point. I, I think is next point in the slide have a focus, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I get the first point is I have a fox uh, in my career. Like, okay, I want to uh, get my first job and to get my job, I need to make these activities. We recorded 100 videos about Java. I recorded my 100 videos. After make this, like after taking the responsibility, uh, after uh, take actions about my life, about my career, I enter the market. Right? Yeah. Uh, after after uh, uh, make this, this actions. But it's, it's, it's at the first point. And have another point, one example. Uh, after recording these videos, uh, I have a, a lot of meetings uh, with a, a great person in the market. And with this, uh, this person's recommendation to give talks and in international events like at TTC, uh, particip and participate in the campus party, uh, participate in the cloud conference day. Uh, I participate in big events because this, uh, because this meetings I had with uh, Rafael and the, and the friends, and because these people see my actions, see my activity in the community. In the, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Go ahead. Like the fusion both and created this. And today I am. Uh, work in the soft journey accentry entry to recommendation uh, making the process yeah. norm normally and with this I, I, I how can I say I realize big dreams yeah. uh, travel to Ireland uh, uh, giving talks in English uh, is uh, recognition the community and the, any any things but I, I say one thing, guys. If I don't have a mentor uh, to give him a tips, uh, it's a have a had a great probability I work won't happen in another uh, sector in ET. Yeah. So thanks a lot for uh, telling us about your experience, Gabriel, because you are uh, uh, a proof. A living proof that yes, uh, having a mentor big makes a big difference. And I myself also had a mentor, and I was kind of lost. Uh, I was I was focusing too much 
on technology. And I thought this was the, the way to get to the next level in my career. And it turns out I was wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong here. Technical knowledge is extremely important. Don't I don't want you to get me wrong. Don't think that technical knowledge is not important. It is extremely important. The problem is that I was focusing only on technical knowledge. Yes. And my mentor, uh, Bruno Souza, he was able to show me that it's not only technical knowledge. Yes, again, technology knowledge is extremely important, but it's not everything. So if you uh, learn other skills, uh, that, uh, for example, uh, the skill of communication um, and uh, the skill. Sorry? This is very important. You you learn a, a lot of the skills. Not heavy. Yeah. The one skill, like, well, I am king, king in this skill. You exactly. need to uh, make it, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, improve another skills. Yes. But yes. try yes. and get a, a good level in one skill. And after good level in one skill, you start another skill. Yes, and that's because um, when you work on other skills, you are able to multiply your technical skills. Why? Because, for example, if you have a good level of communication, you can empower other people, you can mentor other people, you can make your team better software engineers because now you are able to pass on your knowledge to them. So, and it's not only me who is saying that. Warren Buffett, one of the most powerful people in the world, he says that if you work on communication skills, you are at least 50% more valuable. So this is a lot. So, and when I say communication, doesn't even need to be, you don't need to give talks. You don't need to, to be exposing yourself like that. Uh, when I say communication skills, I also say about your writing skills. How can you, how you're writing your messages to your colleagues, how you're writing an email to your manager or to your team, uh, how you're communicating during the interview. And those things are important during the interview. How you communicate, if you communicate clearly, then you, are, you have much higher chances of being approved, of getting the job. And if you work on your, on your communication skills, you uh, make friends more easily. For example, when you go to an event, you're able to communicate uh, with people and you create uh, real connections and you do networking. And you know, this is uh, very important to do in our area. And But remember, to do networking when you don't need it. So you do networking, you create real friends, and then you work together if it's uh, uh, interesting for you with whoever you did the uh, the networking. So I see some questions here. So Lob is asking if there is a mentorship program, Barfell. Yes, there is Lob, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, have I'm gonna offer you a very special gift. Uh, in, in the end of this presentation. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna offer you kind of a free career conversation, but I need your commitment for that. So what I'm doing, I'm doing a special promotion where I'm basically giving you my golden lessons book and my Java Challengers book for five dollars because I just want to see okay, are you an action taker? Are you someone who is committed? If you are, if you uh, get those books for this symbolic price, $5, you're going to get the career conversation with me. And I'm going to see if you are uh, prepared to enter the mentorship program. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something a little bit crazy uh, today. I've never done that before, and I'm doing that only because I'm sure that the mentorship works. Because I had 
a lot of uh, good results. Uh, well, not me, <laughs> my mentees. Actually, they did the work. I just guided them. Um, but uh, they had amazing results. So what I can do for the five uh, persons, for the five first persons who uh, get the career conversation with me, um, you're going to have uh, a very, very special uh, promotion uh, if you are ready for the mentorship. So that's what I'm going to do. So stay uh, until the end of this, of this talk because uh, you're going to be able to have this career conversation with me and then I'm going to see what are your career dreams, what are your career goals so that we can uh, work on your career together. So, uh, Gabriel, I think Gabriel said uh, everything. I can go very quickly here. So, obviously, find a mentor who got what you want. So, uh, if you want to become a Java champion, you get a mentor who became a Java champion. If you want to be a senior software engineer or uh, get more money, you find a mentor who is getting the money you want. If you want to uh, be able to uh, give a talk, find a mentor who is giving a talk. So this is very important. And as Gabriel said, by having the help of a mentor, you gain a lot of time. Um, for example, uh, when I was uh, confused, confused because I was focusing so much on the technical knowledge and I was seeing everyone in the company I was working for getting promoted and I wasn't getting promoted and I had no idea why. And my mentor was crucial in that part because I didn't have this vision. My vision was very close. It was very narrow. And if I didn't have a mentor, uh, <laughs> I would take, I don't know, 10 to 15 years, I don't know, to, to get at the level I am now. If I, if I would, maybe I would never get the level I am now without a mentor. So this is extremely important because a mentor will give you uh, directions directions and yeah and, and the, the vision of a mentor is is impressive it seems they are always 1000 uh, um, years ahead of you so it's like it's it's incredible uh, uh, it's, it's another point good I, I i i don't know if i say uh it's uh shared mistakes share mistakes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's important yeah you share your mistakes with me and oh i say oh if i make this i make mistakes and it is uh, uh my career is having grow more slowly and i i say i i, I have idea oh i don't make this because this is wrong <laughs> like uh, uh how can I say your mentor um give me uh, um, tips or oh, not make this because this is not very good. Yeah. Yes. Like like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, okay, Lob is saying that he bought the Java Challengers book. Uh, you're gonna get the Golden Lessons book if you don't have it, Lob. Um. So you have you you're gonna get the Golden Lessons book as well. Okay. So let's continue. Hack your health. So why is important? Because without health, you're not even allowed to live in this world. So uh, your health should be your top priority. It should be on top of everything. Because if you focus only on your career and forget about your health, what's going to happen is that even though you're going to have, you're going to be more likely to be I wouldn't say that you wouldn't be more likely to be successful in your career because there are a lot of benefits of doing exercises. But the thing is that if you focus only on your career, you want to be able to enjoy um, what, uh, what you reap from your career. So that's the problem. 
because if you're unhealthy, it's difficult for traveling. It's difficult to uh, to even walk. It's difficult. Uh, you you get uh, uh, ill very easily. So there are a lot of things that happen when we are unhealthy. There are a lot of bad things that happen in your life. So it's very important to focus on your health. And like I said, it should be your top your top priority always. So. And it's not even that difficult to be healthy. You, do, you must have a reasonable nutrition. What does that mean? You can't exaggerate on junky food. You can't exaggerate eating uh, pizzas, hamburgers, uh, a lot of those things that contain a lot of uh, fat. So just avoid yeah. that. You're feeling lazy. You feel lazy if you feel without you don't have energy so try to eat some vegetables try to eat some fruits drink water drink if you can two liters of water i have this uh bottle i drink it every day and i feel it with two liters of water and that's it and i drink it so if you create those habits your health is going to improve a lot and you're going to be able to deliver uh better value to the company you're working for or you are going to be able to study and retain more information there are a lot of benefits on that do exercises at least three times a week this is so important if you do exercises you're going to be more energized you're going to be a sharper developer a developer who is able to learn things more easily so uh and this there's a lot of scientific scientific uh studies regarding that and if you do exercises three times a week um there is a, a, a protein called bdnf so this is a substance your brain uh, will release when you are doing exercises which repairs the stressed out um, neurons which makes you learn something more quickly. So by doing exercises, you have a lot of benefits. Yeah, your body releases endorphin yeah, and uh, dopamine as well. So you have a lot of uh, benefits to be more motivated, to have more energy. And remember, if you are going to start doing exercise, if you're if you never done exercise and you're going to start doing exercise, don't start doing the exercises in a very heavy way. Why? Because habits are difficult to create. And if you start a very a very difficult routine, what's going to happen is that probably you're going to do that for a certain time and then you're going to give up. So be careful with that because consistency is the key. It's not if you do that very intensively for one or two months and stop, that's the same as nothing. So be careful with that. Have the, not the sprint mindset, but the marathon mindset. Because remember, exercise is for your whole life. So your health should be your top priority for the rest of your life. So if you create a very crazy routine that's very difficult, what's going to happen is going to, because it's going to be very likely that you're going to give up very easily. So uh, start, build it up bit by bit. Don't need to start with a crazy routine all of the sudden. So that's important. That, that, that's an important mindset for you to not to give up. Uh, and find some exercises you enjoy. For example, I do the gym and I do dancing as well. So I do... Uh, resistant exercises um, and um, I also dance. dance dancing is uh, an aerobic exercise and it also helps you on your confidence and there are a lot of other benefits so find exercises you enjoy don't need to do dancing like me you can do uh, football you can do you can play tennis you can uh, do whatever you enjoy uh, uh, martial art I think martial art is great because it teaches you discipline and discipline is for sure is a key trait for you to uh, to uh, be the best. So 
But doing exercise, you're going to be sharper as a software engineer, like I said before. And track your goals. Why track your goals? Because by tracking your goals, you're going to see progress. And if you do things and you don't track whatever you're doing, what's going to happen is that you're going to have the impression that you have no progress. So I personally use Pomodoro. And for those who don't know what's Pomodoro, it's basically a timer. It's a 25 minutes timer. And once you start this timer, you are focused on your work. You don't check your social media. You don't do anything else. You focus on whatever you want to accomplish. Um, if you want to study something, you focus on this study. If you want to write an article, you start the Pomodoro and you do the article. So it's that's uh, that's why it's important to use Pomodoro because you can track uh, your your progress. You can use Trello if you prefer. You can use a physical whiteboard. Um, and then you're more far more likely to get your goals done consistently. So um, you don't need to use what I use. You see, you have many uh, tools here available. You can use Pomodoro, you can use Trello, you can use Whiteboard. And the important thing here is not to use the same tool I, I use. The important thing is for you to take action and uh, and uh, have progress on your goals and have focus. So why it's important? Because having too many plans will usually take lead you to no action. So one technique I use to accomplish big things in a year, I have the big five um, strategy which is basically five big goals I want to accomplish during the year. And then it's very simple. It's not complicated. I write down about those five big goals I have. And that's it. Uh, then I know, OK, those are the big things I want to accomplish in this year. And that's my goals. So. Avoid having too many plans because if you have enough, if you have too many plans, what's going to happen is that you're, you're going to get overwhelmed only to see your plans. So be focused. Choose one thing that you can do. And instead of having crazy plan with so many things to do, no, you focus on that thing. And that's it. And you see, uh, Warren Buffett also follows this rule. And he's one of the most successful uh, people in the world. And um, he's very focused as well. So for those who don't, probably all of you know uh, of Warren Buffett, but Warren Buffett is, for those who don't know, he's uh, the greatest investor in the world. And he's very focused. He doesn't, he doesn't invest in companies he doesn't know. So... All of those technical, uh, all of those tech companies, all of those big tech companies, he doesn't care because he doesn't understand those companies. He's focused on the business he knows. And if a person who is uh, extremely successful is saying that focus is important, it's obvious that it is important because... Um, Otherwise, you usually don't take any action or you make so many mistakes that you get demotivated very quickly. And too many plans lead you to slow growth. I can give you a very concrete and simple example. Let's suppose you want to learn every programming language in the world. What's going to happen is that you're going to have slow growth in every single programming language. This means that you want to be able to generate a lot of value with this knowledge. It's important for you to have the mindset of learning something so that I can do something else. Learn only what you need. For example, if your work, if, if your work 
requires you to learn a certain technology and this is impacting you every day, focus on that. Learn this thing that will help you on your day-to-day -day job and then uh, you see what's the next thing you need to learn. But the point here is to learn what you need. Learn uh, something so that you can do something important. And use the just-in-time learning technique because, you know, in the microservices era, there are so many things we have to know that sometimes it's just impossible to know everything beforehand. So, uh, but you can get uh, a task at your job and you can use the just-in-time learning technique because we have internet. So whatever is, whatever is the technology, whatever is the problem you're solving, you're gonna find information on the internet and you're gonna, you're gonna be able to learn on your own. Like I said, there is a special gift for you. So um, you're gonna get the Java Challengers and the Golden Lessons book for a symbolic price, only $5. And then you're gonna get the career conversation with me to talk uh, about your career challenges so that we can work together on your career. And work smart and hard. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that you shouldn't work hard on something that might be a waste. And this, this is very related to focus. If you're focused on the right thing, and if you're doing work on this right thing, then um, I think it's great. But I, the best, uh, uh, the, 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 the best thing you can do is to work smart and hard. Because if you want to grow a little bit more quickly, if you work smart and hard, you have your growth a little bit more quickly. So um, this is important to keep in mind. Optimize your time. So what do I do? So to optimize my time, I, I downloaded uh, many books on Audible. And um, why I was commuting to work or while uh, I was cleaning the house or going to the gym, I was listening to an audiobook. And by doing that for around four years or five years, yeah, around five years, I think I read more than 200 books. So this is powerful and uh, books are very powerful. You can learn one thing in the book that might change your life completely. So this is what I've been doing and my mind expanded so much by reading those books and I became a much better person uh, because books, I think those are one of the best investments you can ever make in yourself. Uh, reading books, reading biographies from uh, people you admire, I think those are amazing things you can do. It's an amazing habit. There's a lot of power in books. There's a lot of power in books. There's a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of wisdom. So definitely I recommend you all to do the same. You can listen to a podcast. Podcast is good to open your mind and uh, uh, discover more uh, uh, resources to um, read books or uh, consume a good content. And you can also use your money to optimize your time. What does, what does that mean? It means that, uh, for example, if you're writing a book, you can hire someone else to create the cover for your book instead of um, spending a lot of time to create a cover that won't be even very good. So discover the power of deliberate practicing. So what is that? This is about consistency. So uh, one thing you can do to uh, be really good in software development is to read code every day. So maybe you can choose uh, an open source project that you like a lot and you can read it, I don't know, 10 minutes a day. Over time, in the whole year, your uh, skills will improve a lot. Um, and uh, 
you could do the same thing by reading the JDK code, for example. So there are many things you can do to uh, really apply this deliberate practice technique. And the last lesson is to take action because if you don't take action, nothing that I said here matters because knowledge is, uh, is not power. Knowledge is potential power. And why it's potential power? Because knowledge only becomes power when you take action with this knowledge. So that's why it's so important for you to take action. Uh, because for example, let's suppose uh, you learn a new language, but you never use this language. What's the point? What's the point of learning something new if you never use it? It's a lot of work for nothing. So take strategic action towards your objectives. Do it even if you don't feel prepared. Uh, and this is a very, very important lesson. Do it even if you don't feel prepared. Why? Because successful people are like that. They don't wait until they are fully prepared. They do it with the knowledge they have, with the current knowledge they have, they take action. Because if you wait until you have until everything is perfect, what's going to happen is that gonna, you're going to procrastinate. So it's very important for you to say, okay, I know enough to take this action. Then you take this action. And even though you don't feel fully prepared, but you know you have, okay, I know I have an idea. I can, I can do it. I can do it. Even though I don't feel prepared, I know I can do it. I will figure out uh, what to do on the way. The, uh, where, uh, once I'm going through this path, I'm going to figure it out. I don't know how, but I'm going to figure it out. And it's far more risky to not take any risk. What does, that, what does that mean exactly? It means that if you are stuck in a company for many years and you think that you have no risk, you are wrong. Because um, if you are comfortable in a company for many years, I don't know, many things can happen. The company can go bankrupt. The I don't know, the, the, the manager can decide, okay, I'm going to fire uh, some people. A lot of things can happen. So it's far more risky to not take any risk. It's far better for you to be always prepared, be always sharp for the market whenever uh, possible so that you can be highly employable. And then it doesn't matter. If you are fired, it's okay. You are highly skilled. You are, you are someone who worked a lot in yourself. That won't be a problem. So well, uh, I guess a little point about take action. Uh, Guys, uh, I have, I have uh, one farce. It's very cool. Uh, bad make, it's better. It don't make. Like, make it is activity. You don't need make this with perfection. But if you make, you get action to make this thing. You enter into this, uh, how can I say, it is looping. And okay, I make this, it's not very well, but the next time I will make it better and get a, a good level in this thing. Uh, like don't don't have fear in make this activity. Like I'm very I have a lot of fear here. <laughs> my <laughs> my hand is very uh, sore uh, because it, so sorry? Your hands are shaking. Yes, my hand's shaking because English is not my first language. Yeah, that, that's uh, a great that's a great example. Yeah, I think Gabriel had we have a great example here. So even though Gabriel don't doesn't feel fully prepared for doing that, he's doing it, and done is much done is much better than perfect. Alexandre is saying here, yeah, done is better yes. than perfect. Uh, yeah, I can. I will just I will even put that. This is for sure a great quote to keep around. Yes, that's definitely true. And that that's what makes you grow, uh, guys. So keep that in mind. Even if you don't feel fully prepared, if you never start, you never improve. So Gabriel improved a lot. Since the first talk he gave with me, he's much better nowadays. His English is much better. 
he saw he's growing. But the thing is, the trick is that he has to take this action, even though he doesn't feel fully prepared for that. So that's what makes him grow. And what makes him take this action? It's because of his courage. So courage is one of the most important traits you can have because courage enable you to take action. So nice. Uh, it is amazing. <laughs> like my mom is shaking, have a, a liquid. I don't I don't know English. It's uh, yeah, you're you're sweating. You're sweating. Sweating. Uh, yeah, yeah. But take action. You need uh, if you want in improving, if you want to grow your career, you need the action. <laughs> like you need courage. Exactly, yeah. Go ahead, Hafa. Sorry. So, uh, to recap, uh, dream big, because if you dream big, you can accomplish amazing things. Um, take responsibility, because if you don't take responsibility, you are powerless to change the situation. You give the power to others. Have a mentor. Why? Because then you expand your mind and you have exponential growth. And you are not, you don't, you don't waste a lot of time doing things that you think it's right. Like I was doing, I was doing things that I thought it was right and it was wrong. I would take a long time to grow in my career. Long, long time. Uh, hack your health. Why? Because your health. Without health, you can't do anything. So like I said, your health should be the top of your priority. The top. No question about that. Because without health, you can't do anything. So have focus. Why? Because by having focus, you do one thing that's important for your career, for your life. Track your goals with Pomodoro. Uh, work smart and hard. You don't need to work hard on something that's useless for you. Try to work smart and hard in something meaningful. Optimize your time by uh, listening to an audiobook uh, on Audible. It doesn't need to be Audible, but anything, any audio uh, book you you like. Deliberate practicing. This means that you have you take deliberate action to improve a specific skill and take action because without taking action. You don't, uh, you don't advance your career. So uh, that's it, guys, and that's my gift for you. It's a symbolic price, like five dollars, nothing. So uh, you're gonna get uh, the Golden Lessons book and the Java Challengers book, and you're gonna get the career conversation with me, a one-to-one -one conversation to talk about uh, your career, and. For the, for the five first people who uh, purchase uh, uh, these, uh, those, those books, we'll uh, have a very special uh, promotion um, for the mentorship if I feel you are prepared for it. So uh, you can get it now. And in the meantime, you can make any questions so if you have any questions, um, you can ask me so, so that um, I can help you in your career. So now it's the time, guys. Uh, Alexandre is saying, we should create a mastermind of challengers to practice English. Yes, that's true. Uh, that's true, Alexandre. Uh, and let's say a uh, uh, commentary, Alexandre here. And uh, thanks, Alexandre. Yeah, Alexandre is saying congrats, Gabriel. Having this courage is already make you shine among the others. Yes, that's true. If you take action and if you have the courage, uh, you will uh, you will have success much more quickly. So. Uh, okay, who else has questions? Claude, do you have any questions? Uh, I see Khalid, uh, Eduardo, Bruno. Guys, you have any questions so far? Oh, nice. Uh, I see 
Scott. Scott is saying that I can vouch for the excellence of the books. Thanks a lot, Scott. You're very, you're very kind. <laughs> okay. That's this awesome. This is very good. And by the way, Scott is going to be the next speaker. So Scott is getting prepared to give the talk. Uh, he's going to be with us very soon. So guys, if you have any questions regarding your career, do it now. Uh, ask your question now. Uh, and it can be anything. After getting the books, how do you reach out to you to, for the career talk? So, Lob, everyone, I will contact you via email. I'm going to give you a link to schedule the conversation with me via Calendly. And you're going to schedule the conversation with me um, in, for uh, from Monday on. So, uh, could it be on Monday or could it be on Tuesday, the day and the time that's better for you. So, don't worry about that, Lob. I'm going to send you, I'm going to contact you. And I'm going to send you the link to schedule the conversation with me. So, and if you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, okay, so, Lobby had this question. Any questions? Um, who else is here? Marco, Bruno, Eduardo, um, Thiago, Akinil. Uh, Aki Jeremy, João Paulo, the new song. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I can call here uh, Scott. So let me put Scott here. Scott. The camera Scott is working well. Scott, I can't see your camera. I can't see you in the camera. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Um, let me uh, let me try reconnecting. See if I get the the camera to work. Sorry. It's about okay. That. It's okay. Don't it's worry. Okay. okay. So. Uh, Love who has a question about your career. Okay, Daniel is saying hi from Mexico. That's awesome. How many countries do we have here? We have so yes. many. Yes. Uh, the people in the, uh, around the world, world. We have Mexico. We have Ireland. We have Cameroon. I Cameroon. see here. Brazil. Portugal, Portugal, Nigeria. Ireland. That's so many countries. That's awesome. Nice to have you here, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Daniel yeah, Brazil. Alexandre is, uh, is uh, in Brazil. Uh, and Daniel is... Um, okay. Oh, nice. Ecuador. Ecuador. That's awesome. <laughs> It's it's awesome because I think for every single people here there is a different country, and Scott is from the U.S., which is awesome. So uh, we have in the people's of our Americas. Yeah, Scott is I talking think. from Houston. Hello, Scott. How are you? Doing much better now. No, I'm visible. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome to have you here, Scott. Thanks. So, yeah. Uh, so Scott will be uh, giving a talk uh, now. Um, Scott, uh, do you want to say a little bit uh, about what's going to be your talk? Sure. Yeah. Well, um, my uh, my whole bailiwick is about refactoring and uh, and just you know doing um, working with legacy code. I mean, if, if you've got some some code that's just horrible and you're afraid to touch, um, I will I will run in where angels fear to tread. And uh, <laughs> I like to, to help people find 
good ways to, uh, is that better? Yeah, now you can see me better. Um, I like to find good ways to make uh, uh, working on, on legacy code actually kind of fun. So um, that, That's awesome, Scott, because uh, I think if not all, the vast majority of software developers are dealing with horrible code every day. So, oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and you know, even if you are working on a greenfield project, by the end of the day, you know, some other goofball has gotten into your code and, and screwed it up. So, you've got to go and clean that up. I know you never write bad code, it's the, those other guys. Um, that, that guy I was last week doesn't write good code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's okay, because frankly, if you're not uh, if you're not looking at code that you wrote last year and wondering what the heck was I thinking, then you're not really growing as a, as a developer. Exactly. So, I think so what I'm going good. to talk about today is uh, called my legacy code workout. It's exercises that you can do to keep your skills sharp. Awesome. So, nice. uh, Scott, thank you so much for being here and giving this awesome presentation. And I'm gonna say bye. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bye come bye back uh, uh, after Scott's talk. But in the moment, thank you so much. And uh, Gabriel, thank you so much for being here as well. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, it's now it's the time with Scott. <laughs> Let's do rock. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Scott, it's your time to shine. So the show Excellent. is yours. Excellent. Okay, so bye. So um, so I'm sharing my screen. I hope you can uh, put my, my screen up there. So basically, uh, like I said, this is a this is my, my legacy code workout. It's, it's to help you become a, a better developer. You know, um, if you think about why uh, why do we work out? You know, why do you, why do you, I mean, that, that's a picture of me, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when I was a little more buff, but <laughs> then I woke up. Um, but uh, no, the, the reason you, you, you exercise is because you want to get stronger. You want to, uh, you want to have better, you know, better health, better balance, and frankly, make life easier. I mean, if, you're, if your muscles are strong, it's easier for you to carry things, lift things, move things, do things around the house. Um, it's easier to, you know, just make life easier. And, and if you really want to see progress, consistency is key. So you're going to choose what part of your body you're going to exercise, what equipment you're going to use, and, and the exercise that you're going to do uh, to, to maximize the effectiveness of your workout. So similarly with legacy code, you know, you want to, why, why do we want to um, work out and, and exercise our software development skills? Well, because frankly, we want to make life easier. We want, <laughs> we want our work to be easier to do. We want to have the the proper solution to a problem right there at at our disposal um so you know again consistency is key if we're going to be doing a workout you want to choose what refactoring technique you want to practice you want to choose the code that you're going to practice it on and of course the the tools that you're going to be using your your ide your your diff tools and, and that sort of thing so let's let's look at this. Um, what are some of the tools that we can use? Well, you know, let's we'll just keep it simple. You don't want to you don't want to have to have your uh, your big expensive workout tools. You're you're going to be generally working out from home, right? So um, we use refactoring recipes. Well, um, those are provided by our, our resource book here by martin fowler here i'll uh, put that up so martin fowler gives us I'll, I'll be showing a better picture of that martin fowler gives us the list of of refactoring recipes inside the front cover you know he's got a list of code smells and then in the back he's got a mapping of code smells to which refactoring you should do and then of course the whole book is filled with uh, 
have the specific ways to implement that refactory. Um, you want a source code repository like, like Git. You know, that's actually a tool that you can use if you make, if you get in the habit of making many small changes, if you find you've you've done something wrong, it's very easy to roll back to the previous state that you were in and not lose the work that you were doing all day long. If you only check in like once a day or once a week, you, you have a potential of losing a lot. But if you check in every few minutes, then you're not going to lose much work. The IDE, we mentioned that before. So you want to be able to know how to use your IDE. You want to know, ideally, you, you want to know the keyboard shortcuts to do things so that you're not digging through the menus or digging through the, uh, the user's manual uh, for the, especially the refactoring functions that you want to do. And of course, you, you can use the compiler as a tool. It'll tell you when you've, you've done things that are, uh, that are wrong and, and you can have it flag things for you and, and, uh, and, and keep, you, keep you doing things the right way, okay? So you're refactoring recipes of, again, that uh, Martin Fowler's cookbook, you know, the, the probably the most popular uh, refactoring recipes that, that he has in there, the ones that you'll use most common would be like if you've got a, a, large, a large class or a large method, you want to extract methods, you want to break it up into smaller pieces or extract classes. If you've got a very large class, you want to extract subclasses uh, of what that 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 class has to separate out the functionality. You want to be able to inline a method so you can take a method that uh, that is broken out that is really only used once and is pretty small. You may as well just go ahead and inline that so that it's uh, it's that's sort of the the opposite of the extract. Um, hide your delegates. You want to um, <clears throat> you want to Basically, uh, there are some parts of the code that are, are complex. You want to just sort of hide that away into a place where you don't have to see it and, and give it a name so that you can call it and keep your code readable. You want to introduce a parameter object. If you find you're using a whole bunch of parameters when you're calling a function, it'd be best to be able to have a, an object that you can call uh, or an object that you can populate to pass that along so that um, it just keeps things more readable as you're working on the code. You can introduce no object. Passing no is, uh, is just a, a dangerous thing to do because you, you're constantly checking to see is this no or not. Whereas if you're using a null object, you can just, you know, you, you won't be doing the operation on an object that doesn't have anything in it, but you're not gonna to have to be constantly checking for a no. Um, you can replace a conditional with polymorphism. Um, what that means is basically if you have a bunch of if statements, that suggests that there are objects hiding in there that we can break out to have their own special functionality and let, let the uh, object-oriented nature of the language go in automatically do all of that checking for you. Again, it keeps the, the code easier to read and it, it makes it easier to maintain by doing that. And then of course, replacing type code with a, a state or a strategy that's very similar to the uh, replacing conditional with polymorphism. If you find by that you're, you're checking to see if, if this is this kind of an object, then I'm gonna do this thing, but if it's this, that kind of an object, I'm gonna do the other thing. Well. Again, stick that into a separate object and, and take advantage of your polymorphism to, uh, to clean that up, make it more readable and more maintainable. Um, so yeah, the, the book that I showed you was, was uh, the brown one. This is the original book that Martin Fowler wrote and that's the Java version. He rewrote it um, a couple of years ago using JavaScript instead of Java because JavaScript seems to be used by more and more people and they need more help. And, and frankly, the refactorings haven't changed a whole lot. A lot of the refactorings that he uh, created in the book are now automated refactorings in your IDE. So again, if, if uh, you should want to, to use those, it makes it much easier. You can go online to his 
refactoring.com site, and he's got all of the refactorings in there uh, if you don't want to buy the book. The book basically shows you the examples of how to implement that refactoring, but if you have an idea of how that should work, then uh, you just go straight to the catalog there and have a, a quick reference. Frankly, I'd recommend you get the book and, and work through it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's helpful having all of that um, in there. Before you can get to the refactoring, you have to know what the code smell is, right? Uh, code smell is basically, uh, it's a section of code that just, you, you know, it, there's something wrong with it, you know, a large function. If you have a function that's, you know, a couple of hundred lines long, then you know that it's it's probably doing too much and should be broken up into, into smaller pieces. Um, I have uh, another book that I'll be mentioning later called Five Lines of Code. His, his assertion is that no method should be longer than five lines. Um, that might be a little extreme, but uh, you'll definitely keep things uh, easier to read that way. In Uncle Bob's, um, um, what's his book called? Uh, uh, oh, Clean Code. Yeah, he talks about how... Um, Basically, your, your code should be, all your code for a method should be able to fit on your screen. Um, that makes it easy to follow, and you're pretty confident that it's only doing one thing. A large class, again, I have some classes that I work on in my daily work that are over 5,000 lines long. Um, unless it's a, like the string object in the, uh, in the Java specification there, um, it's probably doing way too much and needs to be broken up into smaller pieces. Again, we talked about a long parameter list um, that you'll replace with a, a parameter object. Um, if you have, Uncle Bob says that if you, you, you should generally have a single parameter. If you have two, you know, you can get away with that. If you have three, you need to really start thinking about uh, if it's doing too much. Um, and you might consider breaking it up into smaller bits. Inappropriate intimacy. That, uh, that sounds nasty because it is nasty. It's basically when you are looking at an object and then that object reaches down into another object and that object reaches down into another object. So you tend to have uh, what's called a God object that you pass around everywhere. Um, the, the project that I work on has this database God object that uh, if you want to do anything related to the database, you pass this database object in. And there you can get all your connection info, and there you can get all your calls to any uh, database queries. There you can get all of your uh, database um, configuration information, the, the different parameters that you have to set. And so everything is in this database object. The problem with that is that that database object, if any of it changes, I'm breaking stuff all over the code. So you want to be really careful about uh, your inappropriate intimacy where you have, you're, you're digging deep into an object to, uh, and, 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 and that object and the sub object and the sub and sub objects that it's they they all contain so that you can get to a piece of data that you need um that's just uh that's setting you up for for um having the code excuse me too tightly coupled and and it's going to be really hard to maintain that and and make any any important changes primitive obsession this is where basically you're you're just you're passing around ints. You know what does an int mean? I don't know. Is it a size? Is it a shape? Is it a length? I don't know. If if I need to have an age, then probably int isn't something I should use. I should have an age because that way people will know what I what it is that I'm passing, what it is that I'm using, and and how it should be calculated. I also know that there's probably a, a reasonable range that I could put on an age for, uh, at least for a, for a person, 
and there's a different range that's uh, appropriate to put for a dog or a cat. Um, so I can I can add some sort of range checking when I create or, or set an age value. I can't really do that with an int. An int can be a negative number or a positive number. Who knows? So um, that's what primitive obsession is. It's, it's you've got an object-oriented language. Use an object to describe what it is you're looking at and have it describe the appropriately the thing that you're wanting to use. You can also that way make sure in you know if you're defining a person you've got an age and a and a weight and a height you can make sure that you're not going to get your parameters confused because you can't stick an a weight into an age slot because it's expecting an age um a switch statement um yeah if you've got a switch statement that's generally because you've got too many if statements if you've got too many if statements that generally tells you you've got an object begging to come out of there uh, or, or, or a set of objects, some sort of polymorphism that, uh, that you can use to clean that up and simplify that. Not always, but in many cases, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to break out whatever that switch statement is trying to, to resolve into creating, a, a, replacing that with, with polymorphism or your, your strategy object, your strategy pattern. And of course, the thing you probably see the most is duplicated code. How does duplicated code get there? Well, I need to add a widget to my, to my project. And this widget looks a lot like a previous widget was, uh, is already there. So what I'll do is just copy that previous widget. I'll fiddle with a couple of things. And then, you know, it, it does pretty much what I need to. And, uh, and I don't have to go and, and rewrite things. Well, that, that starts leading you into having things get out of sync. If I go and make a change to the original widget because there was a bug there, that change doesn't get propagated to anything else that was copied from it. And that's where you start having all kinds of problems. If you find yourself making a copy of something, step back and say, you know, I should probably create a, an interface and then a couple of different objects that inherit from the interface so that we can extract out the uh, the the commonalities and, and make sure that I'm not duplicating code. Okay, so some other code smells that are associated with refactoring. So if you have a large function, the kind of code smells you might do, again, this is all all in uh, the refactoring book. It's in the uh, that refactoring link, this uh, refactoring com catalog. It's all here as well. Um, you, you, if you have a large function and you want to break it up into smaller pieces, the refactoring method that you'll use probably the most is to extract a method. You'll just take a, a smaller method and and uh, take one section of the code and extract that out into a smaller method. A lot of times you'll find if you've got uh, code with a, a comment on it, then you can um, you can go in and, and move that out into, uh, you know, into a, a separate method and, and call it whatever that comment is. Um, it just makes it a little easier to read. Replace a temporary with a query. So um, this is a little more obscure. Basically, you're you're creating an uh, a variable that you're using only internally to the method, and and you're only using it in one small section of code. Basically, you could extract that out that that uh, that temporary value and create a query for that value, create a function that gets that, that value. Um, sometimes breaking that out, then you don't have to um, be worrying about maintaining this, you know, is this temporary value something that I need to uh, keep track of? It's just one more thing I've got to, got to read and, and I've got to calculate. But if I stick it into a query, which is basically a function call to get that value, then I've got all the logic that goes and computes it someplace else. Replacing a method 
with a method object. Okay, so if there's a sometimes you you've got a method that uh, that could whatever it, it's just more appropriate uh, as as an object, and uh, I need to start moving uh, or decompose a conditional. Basically, that's where we're talking about. You've got these. Uh, long if statements and you want to replace that with uh, with object or the strategy pattern. Um, so let's say I want to practice doing this. Where will I find code that I can practice doing this with? Well, you can go to coding katas. They're all over the internet. Um, you can look at various open source projects. One of my favorites is the uh, the Jenkins project because they make it really easy to get involved at, at contributing and, and getting to their, you know, understanding their source code and, and how it works and, and the places where it needs help and places where you can get started in, in contributing. Code retreats. There is the, the National Day of Code Retreat is coming up um, next week. And so you should, uh, you, know, you should get involved with that if possible. There's a, um, the, um, what is it? Calgary, Canada has a group that does a, a week of code retreat. Instead of having it all in one day, it'll, it'll probably be next Saturday. So instead of having it one day, you do that in uh, over over a week and they'll basically be a one hour a day. So instead of having one five or six hour session, you'll have five or six one hour session. It's pretty cool. Also various blogs discuss cool uh, refactorings and they, they can provide you with the source code on GitHub and you can go and fiddle with it yourself following what they do. And similarly in books, uh, I'll talk about uh, a couple of books that have some uh, suggestions of, of code that you can practice with. Um, so looking for katas, basically the, the, uh, this site is called Range of Katas. It's uh, got a, a number of really helpful refactoring katas. It's got a whole bunch of different types of katas and they're classified in the type of things that you might want to practice. Probably the most popular kata out there is the Gilded Rose by uh, Emily Bosch. And it's available in any language you can think of. One uh, 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 friends of mine, Jay Bazuzzi and Llewellyn Falco, decided to go and refactor uh, a Sudoku game and they recorded it. And so they have this refactoring pipelines uh, project that they walk through and, and show you how to, to do that. It's, it's really helpful. Uh, there's some various open source projects. Um, one that I like to look at is called Slide. It's a, it's a, a Reddit client for Android that is just notoriously bad. And I've been following it for a number of years, and I noticed a couple of months ago that they've uh, they've stopped working on it. And my guess is the reason they stopped working on it is it's just such a freaking mess. They can't maintain it anymore. But it's uh, it's just full of wonderful things that you can go in there, all kinds of code smells you can go in there and, and fiddle with to, to try and clean things up. Uh, again, I mentioned Jenkins. It's a great project to dig into and and uh, see how how uh, an open source project works. And they've got great documentation for getting involved and finding things that you can fix and, uh, and things that you can work on. Another bit of ugly code out there is the, uh, the Telegram, Android's Telegram client. Uh, and you can find on Dr. Kalo. And that's got, uh, that's got some some nice ugly code out there as well. I don't know that it's, the reason I picked the Android is because uh, I work in Java and most of the people I work with are Java developers. So these are examples that I use here. There are plenty of examples in you know PHP and Python and and C sharp and whatever other language you want to work in as well. Um, the this is if you want to get involved with the code retreat. Again, they're all over the world. Um, go to coderetreat.org. You can find one that will be in your, at least in your time zone, if not uh, in your city. Uh, many of them are in person and some are online. Um, most are probably online these days. 
But uh, go check that out at this coderetreat.org. I, I vigorously, strongly recommend you do that. It's a, a great idea, a great way to, to practice and learn things from other really smart people. Um, some blogs that I like to look at, uh, some really cool articles that, that discuss refactoring. Uh, one that I, I found some years ago um, by Wouter Lagerwisch. Um, he's a, a German guy, I believe. And um, he basically takes this horribly ugly code and refactors, give, shows you 50 steps to uh, refactor, which is uh, it's a, a helpful little tutorial. And then Emily Bosch, she did the, uh, the Gilded Rose Kata. And she, um, she has, among many, has this uh, blog post taking a, uh, uh, an example by Martin Fowler into a refactoring kata. So it talks about how to take the example from his book and, and turn it into a kata that you can fiddle with. And of course, the uh, Sudoku refactoring kata that uh, I was mentioning before, that's, it's done in C sharp. But um, but it's it's worth looking into. Um, oh wait, no, this is not it. This is a this one. The Sudoku refactoring kata is actually in multiple languages. So uh, just dig into that and and check it out. Um, more places to learn. Uh, people that I follow, Llewellyn Falco is a uh, is a really sharp guy, and he has all kinds of suggestions and and tools that you can use. Michael Feathers, of course, he wrote um, Working Effectively with Legacy Code. That's one of, uh, one of my favorite books. It's one that you'll want to refer to regularly if you're working in Legacy Code, which you are, whether you think you are or not. Um, of course, Martin Fowler has uh, a great blog where he talks about all kinds of uh, different uh, ways to, to code properly. And then Arlo Belshi has... Uh, uh, He's got great articles on, on refactoring. One is called um, Naming is a Process, and it's a six-part article. And we, we, I know we often struggle with coming up with the right name. He has a process that you can follow to come up with a, a good name that will fit and be make your code easier to read. Uh, again, this is the refactoring book I was showing before. These are the... Uh, this is the original one that came out. This refactoring workbook takes the refactorings that Martin Fowler came up with and actually creates some exercises that you can follow. So um, I, I recommend, heck, all three. At least get these two if you're a Java, Java developer and, and want to learn and practice doing uh, refactoring in a, in a Java perspective. Otherwise, you kind of have to translate what they do to whatever language you're working on. Again, um, if you're using JavaScript, uh, the, the newest refactoring book is, is a great one to use. Um, Clean Code is a great reference. Uh, Uncle Bob, has, uh, he shows his own code for his, uh, his project that, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just uh, drawing a blank right now. but. Uh, 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 a a code um, uh, a source code management tool that uh, he's written that uh, he shows the source code for it and and some of the the things that he did to clean it up and, and keep it clean. Um, this five lines of code by Christian Clausen is uh, a really handy uh, book that walks you through. Uh, a tutorial of refactoring code. It's done in TypeScript, but it's it's easy enough to follow. The uh, TypeScript is close enough to just about any object-oriented language that you want to use that you'll be able to to follow along quickly. Um, and he's the the crazy guy who tries to get you to write your code in f for any method in in five lines or less. Um, Re-Engineering re Legacy Software by Chris Birchall is a book that came out, I don't know, a year or so ago. Um, and he sort of takes you uh, from top soup to nuts about you know, the decisions you make in, in whether you should re-engineer re something or should you re rewrite the darn thing from scratch. 
and the decision process you go through. And uh, he also has some excellent refactoring suggestions in his book that uh, aren't necessarily covered in, in the other books that I've, I've mentioned. Um, so again, you know, you want to get hard, you want to get strong, you want to get good at what you're doing. So choose some code to work on. I put some suggestions in there. Choose a refactoring method to practice. Martin Fowler has uh, a number of things that, uh, that we can choose from. You can go for any of the books or then choose an exercise. If you're, if you're stuck for an exercise, I, I can't recommend this book strongly enough. He, he basically walks you through exercises of how to do various refactoring so that you understand the steps necessary to do it. And, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great way to just go through and, and do the exercise. Um, I, was going to do a demo, but uh, I'm frankly I'm I'm out of time, so I will just uh, I'll have to leave it at that. Um, I think that uh, you probably have a, a good idea of where to go with this. I'm open to to answering any questions. If you want to, I've I've got a book uh, on some of the most common uh, code smells that you'll run into and the kind of refactorings you want to do to uh, recover from that. You can go to this link here, java.mn slash code smells, or, or get to that QR code. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Scott Risham. And uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, happy to, happy to chat. That's awesome, Scott. Uh, guys, we have any question for uh, Scott? If not, Scott, what is the, in your opinion, if I want, um, if you, I know it's a very difficult question, but uh, if you were go, if you had to decide what is the most important book, the book that would give you uh, more results to refactor the code, which one would you recommend? Only one book. Um, if you're if you're new to refactoring, I, what I would recommend is this, uh, this five lines of code. He really uh, assume, doesn't assume you, you have any refactoring experience and he uh, takes you into some fundamental refactorings that you're most, most likely to run into in the code that you're, you're, um, that you're gonna be working on in a daily basis. If you have some uh, some more experience behind you, then I would recommend basically these two books. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the refactoring workbook uh, takes the refactorings that um, that Martin Fowler does and turns it into specific exercises for you. So um, I know that's kind of waffling on your one book recommendation, but you know <laughs> they, they just go together. Um, and, and yeah, he goes, uh, much more in depth into all the, 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 some of the more complex refactorings. And actually, you know, I, I should have put this in there. Um, uh, here, I'll, I'll just show this here. I'll stop sharing my screen so you can yeah. see, uh, how do I shop? Here, you, you take me out. There we go. This uh, Refactoring to Patterns by Josh Karevsky is a, a terrific book for, he, he takes uh, Martin Fowler's book and his refactorings and turns it into, okay, so you've got the code smell, you, you've got a, a refactoring you need to do. This is very practical. It says, okay, what you want to do is, is refactor towards better code. And the better code is ideally a, uh, a pattern, uh, 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 what do you call it? a design pattern. Um, if you're gonna be writing code using a, a design pattern from scratch, then you're, you're kind of missing the point. Um, you'll, a design pattern is what you discover in your code. Or you know, you'll, you'll say, this looks like this particular pattern, but it seems to be incomplete according to the specification and I'll go and and clean it up that way. 
but if I'm going to be refactoring something and I'm not sure exactly where to take it to, then um, then this, yeah, this is this is the best book I'd recommend because it oops, it shows you how how to refactor into a specific direction you want to go. And uh, I will make a point to add that to uh, future versions of this presentation. So <laughs> thank That's you. Awesome. That's awesome. a great question. Thank you so yeah. much. I'm hearing my echo. Oh, okay. Uh, um, for some reason. Uh, it's probably me. I can uh, hear. Okay, uh, guys in the audience, do you have any questions for uh, Scott? Have any questions? You can do it now. Otherwise, uh, we can. Okay, the new song is saying, Thank you very much, Scott. Very useful information. Thanks, Danielson. I will send you my slides so that everybody can get the links that are, are in there because I know that I kind of went through it quickly. But yeah. uh, but I will I'll go ahead and, and email those to you so that you can get them out to everybody. That's great. Thanks a lot, Scott. Okay. Uh, okay, thanks a lot, Scott. Uh it's awesome to have you here, and I really enjoyed uh, your presentation. Uh, Absolutely. I learned a lot. It's great to see you again, Rafa. Great <laughs> to see you too, Scott. Very nice. João is also saying, thank you, Scott. It was awesome. Great. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's All right. Great. So that's it then. Thanks a lot, Scott. Sure thing. Hope to see you again. OK. You have a, you have a great day. Have a great day. Good luck with your with the rest of your conference. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. So now I've have here uh, Alan Vieira Ribeiro, and um, Alan is finishing uh, the fourth uh, session, the fourth cycle of the. Challenger Developer Mentorship. So, um, and he's, he already uh, gave this talk to a uh, uh, conference and he's gonna deliver this talk for you now uh, about uh, cracking the fundamentals of the microservices architecture with Quarkus. So it's gonna be awesome. Alan, you're very welcome. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Can you listen to me well? Yeah, yeah, I can listen to you perfectly, okay. yes. So let's start here, just. Yeah, happy to see you here. Um, so, okay, um, whenever you have your slides uh, ready, Alan? Yeah, I can start sharing right now. Okay, Alan? Uh, you're very welcome to give this talk about microservices. And I have to say that uh, this is very important because microservices is used nowadays, I think, in more than maybe 90% of the companies. Therefore, it's crucial for all software developers to understand more about the principles of microservices because nowadays it's just a new default in the market. So the talk from Alan is very important. It will help you to understand the principles of microservices so that you can uh, create high quality uh, cloud services, okay? So Alan, okay. the show is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let's start. Uh, we are going to talk about cracking the fundamentals of the microservices services architecture with Quarkus. So at the beginning, we are going to talk about what is a microservice and the 12 factors that we can use uh, to easy help us to create and maintain these microservices, this architecture, because when we start develop, developing a lot of microservices, we can have, we can face a lot of uh, problems or things that we can try to aid us to easy this transition or starting doing this architecture. So as an um, example, we are going to use Quarkus, who is, uh, which is a framework, uh, Java framework, with, that 
was created to use with um, this microservice architecture. So first of all, the microservice is um, an architecture style. So which um, project that we have, which each microservice is independent and they offer small services. So if we make a comparison with um, the monolith uh, architecture, we can split uh, this application in small ones. So we can have, for example, a microservice for payments, a microservice for authentication, another microservice for <coughs> saving uh, made some uh, queues or another kind of function that you need in, on your system. They are completely specialized. So like the examples that I gave, uh, the microservice for the payments, they are used only for the payment system. So they don't are coupled with the another one. So for example, we can have um, uh, the microservice who is responsible for uh, selling the products. So they don't uh, need, uh, they aren't coupled together in the same code base or in the same use. Uh, each of these uh, microservices, you can have your own stack. So you can create like a microservice in Java and another one in C Sharp and have each one any kind of databases or ways to store this data. And they will communicate with each other using REST APIs. So we can use these GraphQL message brokers, even streamers, gRPC. So all these protocols that we have, we can use to do this uh, communication between these microservices. So for when we are going to create these uh, microservices, we have these 12 factor principles that they were uh, created by the engineers at Heroku to collect all the data that they had when doing the microservices in these uh, in their uh, platform. So first of all, we have the code base. So each microservice will have its own like Git repository for keep it uh, uncoupled for the other. So for example, if we have a change that we can uh, want to release for production, if we have another team using, we have like to controlling uh, all these changes to our code base. So with each microservice, we'll have uh, its own code base that is separated from the other microservices. The second one is the dependencies. So when we have a project, we need to uh, set, define these dependencies. So when we are using already Maven or Gradle, we can define all these dependencies for each one of these microservices. So it's easy for us to, when we want to build these microservices, have this all set up. The third one is the configuration. So the configuration of the microservices are the data that we use, like for example, um, keys, uh, URL for another microservices or services, uh, the user name and password for our databases. So all our microservices need uh, like a way to uh, to manage this configuration, so we can use and uh, being easy to uh, deploy it, like in production or stage. The backing services are a term that we can use that will mean to any other services that we are using within our microservices. So for, the, for example, we have a microservices, but we have uh, databases. So this database is a backing service for our microservices. Uh, the next factor is the build, release, and run. This means uh, essentially that we need to have like a CI or CD uh, set up with our microservices so we can uh, build our, our microservices, microservice, generate and release 
and put on production or on staging. So when we have already uh, created a CI CD, we can do it this easily. So it can help us, uh, like for example, uh, when we get to the concurrence uh, to uh, deploy easily more than one uh, microservices. The process, it means that our microservice must run as a only one process. So we can use this to start easily and finish easily this application. So it will be uh, easier to us to start this application as an uh, only one process. The port binding, it means that our microservice must start and uh, show us, uh, be linked to a port that we can access or even connect to these microservices. So when we have already, like for example, in Quarkus, we already have inside the application that is a, a jar, we have our server there. So we have this server that is start up when the application starts and offer us uh, a port that we can connect to it. The concurrency it means that we can start a lot of instances of the same microservices. So this means like when we have the process, when our microservice is a process, we just start this process and we have a lot of um, microservices running in this. Disposability, it means that we can easily kill uh, a microservice that is running. So it means like, for example, oh, we want to release a new uh, version of these microservices so we can uh, finish fast uh, this application that is running, the old application that we want to uh, change. So we have to keep this in mind to make this transition. The dev and prod parity, it means that the same environment that we have in production, it must be the same that we have in development. So we can have, uh, make all these changes easily in the, our development phase. So when we go to production, we won't face a lot of problems because of all oh, the environment is completely different there. The logs are the part that we can need to uh, save all these logs of these applications because when we are communicating between all these microservices, we can sometimes face uh, uh, some problems. For example, another microservice is down, so we need to identify all these problems or even all the errors that we are getting there. And the admin processes, it is uh, a way that we can execute like this process of administration inside our microservices. So for example, we need to update our database. We need to make some um, migration of data. These are some examples of admin process that we can use there. So these are the 12 factors. And we are, go we are going to talk about right now Quarkus. So Quarkus is a Java framework. It was created for uh, the cloud native world. So since of the beginning, the main goal of uh, Red Hat when creating this uh, framework was that he must be, it must be uh, a Kubernetes native. So he is a right top uh, for this world of containers. And he was prepared for run in the Java hotspot and the Graal VM. He was creating using the best of bridge Java libraries. So he uses uh, Jakarta EE, Eclipse Microprofile, and a lot of Java specifications and projects from Red Hat and glue everything together to create this framework. And we can create a lot of applications in a main way of architecture. So we can create like a monolith applications, microservices, uh, create servlet functions with Quarkus. So this is in general what Quarkus is. And we are going to do like a small demo here. So we are going to create 
um, basic app and we are going to show some uh, extensions that we can use to get these 12 factors and how Quarkus implement these 12 factors. So for creating our, our application, the first thing is the Quarkus.io, that is the website, is your friend. So you can find all the kind of information there. So you want to implement, for example, a GraphQL microservice. There is a tutorial that will guide you through every step that you need to do. I want to create a Quarkus application using Kotlin. So there is a guide that will show you all the steps that you have to do and all the um, configuration and setup that you must do to run well. So for creating our first our application, we are going to access here the code.quarks, just here. Here we have the quarks.io, the page that we have. Uh, quarks, it has like a re release calendar that every week there is a new release a fixed release and one future release um, by month. So like every week we have a little bit of fixes here. And in this page, we can find the guides here that, that I mentioned before. So you can find everything by category here, like common line, security, message, data, everything like that. But we are going to create this first uh, application. So we are going here on start coding start coding here, we are going to select all the extensions that we are going to use in our application. Here we can uh, set up uh, our group and artifact, artifact that will create the project. And we can use here uh, the build tool. So we can set up with Maven, Gradle, and Gradle with Kotlin. So I'm going to select Maven here, and I'm going to create a simple REST application. So here we are going to use the REST easy um, extension. Let's just get the classic here. So the REST is classic that we will use to create uh, the REST uh, application. The REST is classic Jackson. So we can uh, make all the signalization of JSON here. I'm going to also set up Hibernate here. Let me just here. Just put here. And I'm going to set up another framework here with um, Panache. It, which is uh, another layer that we can have on Hibernate that will have help, help us doing very uh, fast uh, queries to our database. And let me see if I'm, I see someone here. Um, yeah, I think it, it is. If I am missing something here after, ah, okay. I'm missing the database driver here. So I'm going to use here a uh, driver for, for Postgres. We have also uh, Quarkus. It, is, it is have a lot of implementation of reactive patterns. So you can find easily to use these reactive uh, features. So we have here like uh, a client for Postgres that offer us to use the reactive program to our queries. Also, the same can apply to REST Easy. REST Easy, I use the REST Easy Classic here. And, and we can you can use also the REST Easy uh, reactive. Just remove it here. OK, it's everything here. So we can generate your application. Another way that you can uh, create your application is using the Quarkus CLI here. That is a, a common line application that you can install and create all 
the project. So you, instead of going to the website and select everything, you can use Quarkus Create on the command line. So you can create the project there. And you can also add extensions, set up all your project here with the CLI. And here already it showed to us the guides that we can use to learn how to set up these extensions that we had. So here in the rest is classic. Let's see. Hold on. Don't know what is happening, but it's going to open to us these guides here. Let's just start here. Maybe it's yeah, I think that okay. So here I downloaded the the file, the project. I'm going to extract here physically. Just a minute. Oh my God. I can't believe it. <laughs> and I've already tested here before. Yeah, the, the demo gods are angry. <laughs> yeah, and I tested before. <laughs> I, I even downloaded the in the Maven before the the <laughs> the talk. I downloaded like the all the the last person here. Let's try again. Let's try to open again. Let me see if I know. Try to maybe close the process of IntelliJ. I'm maybe there is to... maybe there is a process. Opened. Are you using Windows or Mac? No, or... I'm using Linux here. Try to close the process from IntelliJ. On I'm not sure how to do it in Linux, but let me just open here. If I found uh... mm -hmm. there is nothing running right now. Um, I'm going to try to install another one here just to see if I can make it work. Q, uh, Pedro is saying here, kill Java, that might kill idea. Yeah, but I didn't find um, any like uh, any like how do I say Java process running? What about idea process? No one. Let me see here. Pedro is saying I mute the process, not to Java itself. The process. Uh, no. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm finishing installing here. Let me see. Are you installing again the uh, IntelliJ? Yeah, I'm installing here another one, uh, the community edition here, just to see if I can and open it fast while I'm looking at it. But okay, do you have Eclipse installed or? Oh no, I don't have a light thing. It was the only one that I had here. <laughs> Just doing a um, text box. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, I'm going to. It's going to be the way. So I think it's the only thing is hard to see the, the code, but we can like do it here. At least let us while it's downloaded here. Uh, I see where I put. Um, yeah, Daniel is suggesting to reboot the machine. Yeah. That's always works. That always works. If you want to try it out, Alan, 
Hi. I will wait to finish the installation here. It's all right. Okay. Um, ending. So if, okay. it, if it doesn't work, I will try to reboot. Okay. So while this is running here, I don't know if are you seeing well. Can can you uh, make the the font a little bit bigger, please? Yeah. Here. Yeah, so here that's yeah. we are inside the, the project. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to to um, download all the definitions while we are starting. So we can, okay, it finished here. Okay, it worked here. So uh, let me see if it finished. Okay, it finished the build here. So it's it downloaded everything there. So I'm going to get the, the project that we created in the, the website. So here we have uh, our project. And we already have like a readme prepared here with all the commands that we need to run the application in dev mode. Quarkus has this, what is called dev mode, that when we start, he create a dev UI that we can see what we are using there to run. So I'm going to start here. You can use also this command here. You can use this command the Maven compile quarks dev, or you can use the quarks dev. Oh, we got another terminal. Yeah, I'm going to use it here. So you can use also the quarks dev command. So you can start the application. So here he is, is starting the application, running the tests in this application. So he shows to us here. I think I'm I'm on the wrong application because just me see his no, it's the same. So he started the application and can use there to access the I think I must reboot everything because everything starts to crashing. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what happens in a live presentation. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me just open here. Let me see. If I... So we started our application in here. We have our dev UI. So this dev UI, we can see all the build steps that the application had. So we click here, everything that run since the start of the process. Our uh, config editor here, so all the configuration that we can use to set up our applications like database, HTTP uh, version, port, um, part, um, the web contest that we are going to use, everything we can also access here and see all the values that are set up. So if you don't know if um, by the full which that we are using, you can search here to find out. We can see all the CDI uh, dependence injection, all the beans that were created, the observers interceptor here, you can see all that use here because we create created a um, sample application. We have this greeting resource that it is our REST uh, class that we have in the project. We have also here the rest is with all the endpoints that we have. So all the endpoints that we create, we can see it here. And we hit even those, these endpoint scores that we can see the, that he made like a kind of test here. And we can also add a lot of uh, another extensions. And if the extensions has the uh, implementation of the dev UI, you can see it here, it, it, it will show to you here all that configuration. 
So here, we are going to see a little bit of our, our code. Let's just, um, uh, the problems that everything I have to set up here. Uh, Rafael, do you think that I can reboot here just to see if it works? Yes, Alan, you can do that, yes. Yeah, I think um, I will try just to see it because if it, if I think it's going to be more uh, fast to see. Yes, so yes. I will stop share here. And in a minute, I will be back, okay? Okay, okay, yeah. In the meantime, guys, if you can make any question about your career or uh, anything that you would like to know more, so feel free to ask, make your question now, because uh, now is the time. I'm here to answer your questions. So have any questions regarding career or anything that you're going through that uh, is, is being difficult uh, for, uh, I don't know, technology learning or whatever situation you're going through your job or um, anything really. So just write your question on the chat and I'll, I'll be happy to discuss that in the meantime, since uh, Alan is rebooting his machine. So Daniel, Pedro, uh, uh, Rob or Marco, Zelina, if you have any question, just send your question so that we can discuss that. Um, so now it's the time. So take advantage of this time if you can. And by the way, uh, this promotion of the of the books and the career conversation will be available only today. So I've seen that uh, some of you already purchased the, the books and the career conversation. So if you missed the chance, you can still get it for only $5 and you can use, uh, you can use the coupon boost career, boost your career. So I'm gonna give you the link here. You can get it. Uh, can get the golden lessons book. Uh, so this book it will help you with the lessons and principles you have to know to uh, evolve your career to go to the next level. And the Java Chanders book, which goes in the core uh, Java principles. And you can use this coupon here. I'm gonna send the coupon, career underline boost, career underline boost, so that you can get 50% of discount in the book. Okay, so Pedro made a question, imposter syndrome and so on. Just gave up and got a new one and it's amazing working uh what can you rephrase please uh pedro i didn't understand your sentence nothing about the comp it just didn't work for me very happy now can you rephrase your sentence uh, i didn't understand imposter syndrome and so on. Okay, so I think it, some mistake happens uh, with Pedro's text. So if you can gather all the text, Pedro, so that you can, uh, can be a little bit e uh, easier to read. Just give up and got a new. Okay, Daniel is saying, Code Refactory and Kata was great advice for practice. Get your next level. What other resource would be advised? Open source. Yeah, that's a good point, Daniel. Otavio Santana will be here soon talking about open source. So you can talk to him about, he knows basically everything about open source. So 
you're gonna be able to talk to him, just send questions to him. Uh, okay, Pedro uh, got up, go up, it's missing the first phrase. Okay, you remember when I was talking about my difficulties last time, imposter syndrome and so on, just gave up and got a new one and it's amazing. Remember, I was talking about you. Yes, yes, I do, yes. Nothing about the comp. I don't know what's comp. You got a new job. Okay, uh, Alan saying he's ready. I didn't understand your question, Pedro. Sorry, if you can put everything together, maybe I can answer to your question after uh, Alan's talk. Okay, so let's continue with Alan. You can uh, send the question. You can put everything together, then I can we can talk about that afterwards, Pedro, if that's all right. Okay, so... Okay, Alan's back and it's everything all right. Hello, yeah, everything's all right, but I'm just going to create the, the project again. Put another name because I saw that I did a confusion there because he didn't create it. It was the last one that I was using before the test I did earlier. So I'm going to just put another name here and add all the extensions that we had. So I'm going to put the prefix. Let's finish here. Add the name. Because I, I want to show you the back services and it didn't like work when I started the application. I said, oh my God, there's something wrong. Do you want to, do you want to share your screen? Oh yeah, I, I was not sharing. No. I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just share here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going yeah. to Yeah, okay. So as, as I was saying, uh, I'm just going to recreate here again. Let me see. Um, it's okay. I extracted here. Now it's Just open. So, okay. As I was saying before, we have here the this readme that we can find all the comments to run our application, and here. In this demo, he already created to us uh, some RESTful web service here that we can access here. And also, he creates a um, JPA engine. It is because we added the Hibernate there. And for Quarkus to start, when we set the Hibernate extension, we have we need to have at least one inch method here. So this is why when I put there the Hibernate uh, dependence, we have here this example inch to here. So right now I'm going to start this application using Quarks Dev. So you will see that I didn't uh, set up here in the application's corpus uh, the information for the database because I want to use it and I want to show you here uh, the Quarkus Dev Services. That is a function, functionality that will see what extensions that you, you have uh, set up here and will start uh, the 
application that we need. So for example here, I said that we are going to use the, in the Maven here, the JDBC driver for Postgres. So what Quarks did here when he started out, he finished here, he started a Docker image with uh, starting Postgres for me. So he already set up here, let me see if I can find here. Yeah, already set up here uh, the image for um, Postgres so I can use it, it when it starts. So it this is the Quark Dev Services that will help you. So if you like want to, you don't need like to set up all the environment to uh, to start like develop. If you want just to, oh, let me just see this easily this application so I can download and start and he will prepare the environment for us to keep doing this. So just looking at uh, the 12 factors, we already see like the dependencies, the configuration here, we can set this up in this file that is the application properties. So in this file, we can set up all the dependencies that we have. So I can like set all the configuration of our data, database. Here, he start up, but I can, I will start here a database just to show you this configuration. I'm just going to start here. A database here. And I'm going to set up here all these configurations. So here we have like, just repeating here, the, all the configuration that we can, can set up. So for example, if we want to change this configuration for production or development environments, we can use the profiles. So for, for example, if we have here the username and password, but I can define here that for the that uh, profile will be this data, but I can create another profile using this prefix here. Like I can create anything that I want. So here I create the staging. So I can define another property so we can easily use this when I'm doing the de deploy or even doing the configuration here during the process like of building and release, we can set like um, the profile for uh, the staging process here to get the database staging, the, for the staging. Also, we can see here that it's that fast like to start uh, the Quarks application. You can see when I started without and he started post with together, it was fast. So, if we can use this that was meant to parts be fast on this e startup because of the confluence. So when you need to start another um, instance of this application, another container, it is fast because you want to replace or you, even you are needing to increase your uh, your processing power there. So it's fast to start even the disposability because you can kill it fast. And the dev prod parity. Here we see that we can set up everything together to start the application using the dev services and all. So here, I'm just gonna see like uh, the part of REST here. It's very easy because we are using JAX RS. So it's the same, uh, uh, the same, uh, annotations that we use in another frameworks that implements this. And for the other examples here that I'm going to show about another extensions, we are going to add the open API so we can see it, how we can see this documentation here. So we can use the command here, just get here. The common 
And when we add this open API here, what we are going to, Quark's going to do here, we will already set up uh, the Swagger uh, installations, the Swagger UI, so we can also see our application running here, all the, the documentation that we generated. So I'm running here, the application. And if I go into the dev services here, I just wait to finish, okay. I can see that it's starting already. Let me see, finish. Okay, it finished. So when I added the Open API here, he showed me already uh, in the dev UI, where is the Open API? Where is the file? And this Swagger UI. So he already set up this so you can access and also see all your do documentation here. Another one that I will add here, another extension, is the health uh, implementation of the Eclipse micro profile uh, definition that create a lot of, um, define a pattern for us to create these health checks in uh, our application. So I'm gonna add also here, this extension using the small read health here and start seeing the application again. We will see that he is going to add there uh, the health checker endpoints that we are going to create. So let's just go here. And just have here a simple next example of a health uh, endpoint that we can create. So let me see. But, okay. So this is an uh, implementation of the Eclipse micro profile uh, health check. So he created this interface that we can use to define this call method and show if our application is up or down. So it defines like a re, um, the full response for us to see. Let just me see if our application is running. Okay, it's running, Let's save this. And I'm going to access here our dev UI. Come back here. And right now it is already here uh, the endpoints that we can use to set up, like for example, in Kubernetes, uh, if to check if our application is up and if it's running, we can use this uh, annotation of liveness to see if it's up and readiness if the application is ready to work there. And the last extension that I want to show is the micrometer matrix that it's a uh, extension that you can use to set up together with Prometheus to get all these informations that we can use like to log our application in Prometheus. So this configuration here is, I, I did a copy, copy. let's just get here. This extension here, all these extensions that I'm showing here, you can search in the Quarkus guides. Like for example, I, I want to use metrics. You can go there, it's a, search, and you will find the commons. Like I'm using here this command for, for, for my commuter. If I came back here, go into guides and search metrics. You can see that that is like a guide that will show you all the steps that you need to do. Like here is the Quarkus extension that I'm using, but you can use Maven and Gradle also to do this um, configuration. So I added here, let's just start the application. And right now, what the metrics are going to do, they are going to create an endpoint that you can set up in Prometheus and get all these informations. So we are set up here 
with uh, the health checker, we are using the health checking for all these kinds of concurrency. So I know if our one application is down, so I can start another instance. And also to see if the application was down, like when I send a comment to kill that instance that is running there. So here the application started. Here we can also see the logs that it show all the extensions that we have in the project. So getting in the dev UI here, just update, we have like the micrometers here and we need just to add some configurations there, like there in the application, uh, in the application properties. So it will show here the endpoint. I think uh, my time is finished, Rafael. Just to see if I... Okay. Uh, so I think with this, I had like that uh, a little bit of problem there, but we have these extensions and it, it is easy to add another functionality and to use it with Quarkus. So you can see also that the dots are very straightforward. So if you want to do this kind of task, it will guide you through. And as you can see here, it is very fast to start a Quarkus application. And also we can use uh, a lot of um, libraries and frameworks that are already known, like the Eclipse Microprofile, the Jakarta EE specifications. So when you start doing uh, this development in Quarkus, if you already use it, uh, Jakarta EE, Javi, it will be very easy to keep on uh, developing this application. So uh, I'm going to open for questions. Rafael, my time is up. All right. Just to see, I think it is. Yes. Uh, yes. But so uh, if you want, just if, if, any, if any, yeah, if anyone has any questions, please send your questions. But you can wrap up, Alan. Okay. So I just want to thank you. I'm sorry for all the, the problems that I had here. I also like tried to test before, but I don't know what happened. But I'm a senior Java developer in FIEG here in Brazil. And we develop a lot of, of uh, applications with Quarkus. I have like a bachelor's degree in software engineer here in UFG and I also a master's. And if you want to follow me in any social media, you can access my site, alan.dev. So you can find all information of all these social media that I have. So thank you. If uh, anyone has any questions. That's awesome. Uh, Alan forgot to mention, but he also got a job in Canada. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he'll, he'll be moving to uh, Montreal, right? Yeah. To Montreal uh, next month. Actually, it's, it's very... I, I think it is. it's going to be next month. I'm just going to apply for uh, the visa uh, on Monday. That's so awesome. So I think it's going to be maybe next month or the beginning of January. That's awesome. So this is an amazing achievement. And uh, like Alan said, Alan is a highly skilled software engineer. Um, and he has more than uh, 15 years of experience. So he's awesome. So thanks a lot for uh, your presentation, Alan. Uh, so Alan has a, has a, oh, sorry, the new song has a question for you. Okay. Oh, so let me put here. Let me read it to you. So the new song is saying great info, Alan, is there any relevant downside we should be aware, uh, of when choosing Quarkus for our projects like technology incompatibilities, resource consumption, among others. Uh, I think like one of the downsides that we can have is because, um, uh, Quarkus is not like the most used uh, framework that we have. So if you find, you try like, ah, I got some error 
it's going to be like easier to find in another frameworks like for example spring you will find a lot more of content but the question for uh, consumption uh, this when we decided to use at my company right now we did some tests using Quarkus and Micronaut. So Micronaut was fast, but because we were already using like the Red Hat solutions, we keep on because the um, learning curve for all the team was going to be like easier to change. So we had like a little bit, like Micronaut was a little bit faster, but we tried to use it. But comparing to resource consumptions, like for example, we were using like Tormtail before that it was the white file swarm from Red Hat. We had like for Nemo, just a simple project, just a REST service. We had like uh, less than half the usage from the um, the framework before that we were using. So like, for example, if uh, a simple application with Tormtail was using uh, 500 megabytes of memory on the startup. On Quarkus, we got that on maybe 200. So I think it, it, it's like the downside this is because it's growing. And we can see like uh, here, even in Brazil, we have like uh, right now Banco do Brasil using, and you can also see in, I think the Quarkus web page that is like a company that is using, but that is the, the like I think is the main downside. You will see a lot of more job openings and even uh, tutorials or all these kind of things more in other frameworks that are more popular. Okay, great. So we have one more question from Lob. Uh, Lob is asking. How is it like switching from a core Java EE application to Quarkus? Yeah, I think uh, the, it's not like very difficult because I started using Java EE and after that we went to like Tormtail. And I think the main difference is like they use a version of CDI that is a little bit different. So we don't have like the AGB. But the rest is like the same. We are going to keep using JPA, uh, JTA, all these implementations from Jakarta. The next version of um, Quarkus that is going to be Quarkus um, 3.0, they are planning to upgrade the version of Jakarta for, I think the, I don't remember like uh, right now the number, but they intend to update this. So, it is like compatible. If you already use like Jakarta, you will find some uh, difference, but you will not be like totally lost there because they are using also the Jakarta uh, specification there. The implementation like of the, the Red Hat implementation of the spe specifications that we have there in Jakarta. Awesome. Thanks a lot for your questions. Is there any other questions? Uh, the new song lab. If not, I will bring Otavio Santana. So, Alan, thanks a lot for the Thank presentation you for having me. Microservices and uh, Quarkus. And uh, for sure, it was. Uh, the, the audience got a lot of value from that. Thank you. So, so bye bye. Okay. Bye bye, Anna. Thanks a lot for being here. Okay. Let's call Otavio now. Okay. Hello, Rafael. Hello, Otavio. Hello, hello. Awesome to have you here. Uh, Probably all of you know Otavio, but I can quickly introduce him. Otavio is a Java champion. He, uh, he's been contributing with open source products for a long time. So I know that someone from the audience asked about open source. So Otavio is, is the person, he is the guy for open source. Um, Otavio is a distinguished software engineer for Zoop. Uh, he is also a doctor. 
So Otavio is awesome. So uh, how are you, Otavio? How are things? Oh, hello, hello, everyone. So let's say uh, hello, Tushar, Daniel, Pedro Henrique. Oh, I guess you are Brazilian. Oh, that's nice. Eduardo, João Paulo, Pedro. Hello, everyone. Hello, it's amazing to be here. And thank you. I'm glad to spend a, the Saturday with you guys. Thank you. I'm, I'm also happy you are here, Otavio. Que Pedro Henrique is saying, yep. <laughs> So, Otavio, the show is yours, okay? Okay, that's nice. The uh, show is yours. Whatever you can, whatever you want to do. Uh, today, I don't like to do code. Uh, we already had several discussions around code. And today, I will do a little bit different. So, I will cover some tips. Uh, next year, I will celebrate 10 years of experience, mostly in open source. And I started wondering if may I do some suggestion, feedback. And imagine right now that I have uh, the power to return from the past and teach the, the new Otavio how can uh, the way they are able to achieve more success and get more results. And based on that, I would like to share with you. Of course, I don't have this power, but I'd like to share with you something that I learned on the over the 10 years of experience around soft engineer, especially to a person who uh, who does a lot of open source and technology like this. Oh, come on, Rafael, don't go away. It's a panel. It's an open discussion. But anyway. I uh, will do this, the, the 10 tips, where okay. fifth tips is around the tech. And the another six, uh, five tips is around people. Okay. The tip number one is about trends. I know everybody loves it. Uh, right now we have microservice, and a new feature might have nano service, and then atomic service. And don't worry, it might be more. In the past, we had Hibernate, second cache, and we had Kubernetes, we had a lot of uh, new products. And the word scalability becomes like a commodity to everything, right? So, because everything has a uh, scalability in the name. Please. Don't follow the herb. Check and understand the context about it. So the, 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 my tip number one is text and buzzwords is there, you'll be there more often than we like. So understand the, the, understand the context and don't follow it. Just understand. It might be true, it might not be true, but remember, Develop experience become a market, and as a market, there are sales pitch and sales person people, and they'll try to sell you every, everything that they had. Pay attention to it, and think twice before you put any kind of idea in production. I, I think this relates to the idea uh, uh, of every single company using microservice rights, Otavia, because sometimes it, it doesn't mean, it's, it's not even necessary to use microservices, but even to companies, okay, I will use microservice because the big companies are using microservices, so I'm gonna use it, whatever. Yes, right now it's microservice, but remember the past was NoSQL database. And before NoSQL database, we put second uh, cache hibernate in everything. I'm not saying that don't understand what's going on because that the IT area moved fast. I guess faster, or maybe the fast fittest in the humanity area. My point is, trends come, die, and you will arrive. So don't push too much to try to understand everything. Instead of that, understand the concepts. Okay, understand why you're using it. Especially because 
the context and the concepts never go away. The cause law has a huge amount of years. Uh, the solid principle, I guess it has 20 years right now. Uh, the SICO, uh, 55 years or something like that. The persistence, uh, the logic has centuries and so on. So, trends, you'll be here all the time. Understand the context and don't follow the herb. The second one, I love when somebody answer me with it depends. Let's face it, it depends is not a good answer for a software engineer. Nobody is paid to, okay, it depends. Imagine that we go to the hospital <laughs> and you ask the doctor on a device and he or she answer you with, oh, it depends. It depends what? <laughs> You need, to, you need to have the right answer. So understand the context. So uh, my whole point here is, remember, it depends is not a good answer to a good engineer. If you don't have the whole information, go for it. Go and understand and then go to your answer. Don't do an answer premature, of course, uh, but don't do an uh, empty answer. Of course, nobody will be looking for you to receive advice to an uh, independent person, right? We are here because we trust Rafael. He will give us good advice, technical advice. So, again, independent is not a good answer for a software engineer. Go to the context and do a better answer than that. And, of course, understand the context is part of your job or our job. Uh, the third advice, we talk about trends. However, there are two things that's not old fashioned. The first one is documentation around our software. Please do it. So if you do open source, doesn't matter if it's open source, it's a proper, proprietary source, it must be scalable to you. Okay, uh, you need to do a, a nice code. Uh, oh yes, uh, is is it good to do a nice code? But it's important to make code available to everybody. Hey Otavio, my code is perfect. I don't need to write a single uh, documentation on it. So that's not true, right? We still have, have we still need to have the the readme on our product we should need to have the change log to see the history when you go to higher levels we need to, uh, to document the architecture inside our organization i mean see for model uh, uh tech radar or do any kind of thing like this so documentation is important as tests are is important as well so unit tests are great, uh, integration tests are great, M2M are great as well. My point here is, it doesn't matter the trends. Documentation and tests are always fashion, looking for the quality of your code, especially because we, we will work with somebody else and we need to make easier the work with everybody. A good test also works as a documentation, but it does not mean that you need to forget the documentation. Okay, documentation is important. Again, in design level, readme and change log. Open PR, documentation about what's going on there. And architecture and organization layer, uh, C4 model, tech radar, architecture decision record, and so on. Uh, the tip number four, the mistakes are important. I know right now everybody's talking about success case. Nobody enjoys to do to talk about the failure case. But let's face it, I'm here because I did several mistakes. The point is learn from that mistake. Try to don't do the same mistake twice. But trust me. Uh, I have 
over the years of experience. And I see you doing mistakes my whole time. It's impossible to don't do mistake. If you don't do mistake, you might not be able to learn. Uh, I had a job. I had a job. Uh, sorry. I had a job. Uh, sorry. I had a job. Uh, a boss. Uh, in the Apache Tomcat product. And he usually said to me that you won't do mistake if you don't do anything. So it's natural to do mistake on your path. Okay. Uh, learn from that, understand from that, and move forward. Yeah. Uh, the, oh, go, go ahead, Rafael. I, I think in that regard, there is even a ceremony. I don't know if it's very popular in companies. There is a ceremony called post-mortem. Uh, which yeah, basically we talk about the, the mistakes, for example, why that service went down or why the, the database was down or whatever. So we have this ceremony. Yes, we took that from the airplanes, right? So they have the, the black box to find. And a lot of people start to complain, okay, but the, the, the asset was gone. Why are they looking for deep, so deep? The answer is to learn from that mistake, to avoid the same mistake and have twice. That's why the uh, air engineer is the most advanced engineer because they don't allow to do the same mistake twice. Let's learn from it. So we're gonna do a mistake. We still doing a mistake but avoid to do that twice. Uh, the, 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 the tip number five that I have on my mind is we as software engineer has a goal to deliver a product, to deliver a solution. We are not a fanboy person. And that's hurt, right? So because we love Java, we love Kotlin, we love Python. The point is, it doesn't matter. The user does not care. Go focus in the right solution to the right time. Okay. Uh, of course, we have our favorite solutions. But sometimes, our favorite solution does not fit in what we want you to solve. And be pragmatic. Be an engineer. Use the right tool to the right moment. And it starts to do the right questions about it. That's a, that's a good point, Otavio. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, tips to help software developers to be better engineers? Uh, because I know that I think at uh, 10 years ago, we were mostly doing code. We were mostly focusing on the code and the application. Nowadays, I see it's very different because of the microservices paradigm change. Nowadays, we work mostly with microservices. And yes, we have to have more of this engineering mentality because sometimes we have to create a whole new architecture for yes. uh, a microservice. We have to think, okay, no, but this database will be better or this programming language will be better for this microservice, for this problem. So what would you suggest for developers to be a better software engineer? Because I think nowadays, this is the new thing, right? Yes. Uh, my advice for it is <laughs> go for the opposite. Because right now, uh, everybody's looking to the fancy solution to, to explore the newest trends. Um, I mean, in the past, the Actech, show they self with the number of layers hey look my application has five different layers oh it's not enough my application has 10 layers and right now we are we are glad to put several microservices and but at the end we should focus on the simplicity of the system hey look my application on my system solve the problem uh, 
in the cheaper way is cheaper than other solution uh, my my onboarding process take just two days guess what i want to have more people new uh, early engineers coming in my product because it's well documented it has more simplicity so uh, my device is go away of the complexity inside your code uh, we mentioned about the, the the airplanes engineers let's talk also a little bit about the musicians uh, i'm a pianist and my favorite pianist is uh, Oscar Peterson. And he is so talented playing piano that he plays like uh, it's, it's the most easiest thing that somebody is able to do it. The simplicity that he is able to play piano is wonderful. But when you go to play that thing, you're able to see that's impossible and for me that's a, the biggest key of the good engineer to transform something so complex and something easier and simpler like we did with garbage collector handle with memory is one of things more complex inside the system operation here right now everybody does not care or they do not care too much like we did with Cassandra with database, we are talking about distributed system. Create an API to make another people's life easier. Writing code, writing a design is the right way. The language doesn't matter. If my team knows Java, should I move to Rust? Uh, okay, Otav, but that is one technical reason to do that okay that's safe but sometimes we are just moving because it's a new trend thing uh, i discussed uh last three weeks and the company that, that, that does consult service about moving the products to go okay otavio let's move our products to go and then i ask why no no because go start faster than java and then i asked and then what and after the start who goes faster and he said oh no java goes faster but it does not start faster as well and then i did the, the classic analogy right okay i'm you are in sao paulo i'm in portugal so based on that decision you're gonna take a motorcycle to come to me just because the motorcycle goes first faster, the startup of motorcycle is faster than the airplane. Does it make sense for you? Because for me, it doesn't make sense. And beside the risk to use Go, beside the documentation, beside a good practice, uh, right now we have GraalVM that will be able to do it faster than Go and Node.js. Those will make sense to change the whole knowledge of the whole organization to follow the new trend. If it doesn't make sense. Oh no. Okay, let's keep with Java at that time. And on the other hand, we had integration with Kubernetes. And they want to do it with Java. But come on, the whole ecosystem on CNCF is in Go. Why not use Go on that part? My discussion here is use the right tool to the right time. Don't follow the herb. Don't follow the the um, the trains. And those are my my tips to that discussions. Okay, uh, in the technical technical perspective. So trains is there. It was there, and it will be there. Get away for it. <laughs> Understand the context and don't follow everybody else. Okay, Netflix is the user that, so you are not on Netflix. Understand why Netflix is using. If it makes sense, go for it. If if not, just learn. 
uh, it, it depends is not a good answer for a soft engineer. As a doctor, as an engineer, you don't like to receive the it's a pain answer. Go find the context and answer properly. It's part of our job as a soft engineer. Documentation and tests are always fashion. It doesn't matter the new trends. The documentation will be there, the test will be there. Mistakes are important. Doesn't matter how success case will be there. The mistakes will help you to, to get more experience. So the mistake is a path to learn as well. I really enjoy if the conference approve more failures case instead of approve only the success case. And the last one, you are problem solver, not a fun boy. So learn language is important. Learn frameworks is important. However, go for the context, the concepts. Because new frameworks will be there. Remember, t trends. But the context, the concepts will be there forever. Like as I said, call it law, and so no SQL, SQL, acid, theorem, and so on. Those are the tech advice. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of times, Otavio, about concepts. What concepts would you recommend mostly for soft engineers to? Uh, be better problem solvers and be uh, highly employable as a software engineer? Uh, the advice is go and send the software architecture, what he is, what should I use, the stra strategy of architecture, microservice, monolith, monolith. Uh, what else? Uh, reactive, functional, understand that the word scalability is more deep than a sales pitch word. So every time that you say that you say scalability, explain. Otherwise, it just looks like it's an empty word. So it's it has more scalability on write something, on read something, vertical, horizontal, or so on. So try to don't use the scalability simply like that. We are running servers on system operation. Go and check out the understandable book around system operation. Uh, understand the, the complexity of the code, the big O, and things like this. Yeah. Understand also the structured data. When should you use link the list when should I not use link the list map hash map and so on bubble short and bubble sorts and something like this yes and uh and this is being asked a lot on interviews uh algorithms data structures uh searching algorithms uh graphs uh, yes all of those things are being asked a lot uh, at least well, uh, in, in, the, in the interviews I've done. So this is important to master, not because of the interviews only, uh, but because you become a better soft engineer. Um, so you mentioned about architecture uh, and system design, Otavio. Uh, do you have any recommendation for software developers to become better on system design because this is something difficult to get better because many developers are working only with implementation, with code implementation, uh, but they don't have the experience to do system design. So would books help on that or you have to have the experience? Oh, yes. Uh, as an engineer, we need to handle with both the theory and the practice around soft design. Of course, uh, read books like Simon Brown of C4 Model, that is the Neo Ford book, Sun Newman's book, uh, the Will Arson books around Safe Engineer. 
those are good recommendations around soft architecture. Uh, so Newman, Microservice, Will Larson, Soft Engineer, and Neo Ford book. So the basic of soft architecture principle, the this one is a good one. Soft architecture, the hard part is a good one. Simon Brown around C4 model, it's a good one. So those are good start around soft architecture. That's awesome. Okay, I said 10. So the first one was around tech. Let's go to the to, to another five. As you mentioned the interview, uh, let's start with this one. We don't know how to do interview. So it's okay if the company said no for you. It doesn't mean nothing sometimes. We are able to see several uh, interviews process and several histories around uh, people who was not approved in the fan companies and then build your own thing like the WhatsApp person, right? He tried to work in the Facebook at time. He was able to. And he built the WhatsApp. That's amazing, right? Um, the second one was the Spotify. That is the, the Netflix series around it. And... He's, he was he wasn't able to get in Google and um, based on that he built the Spotify company and the point is it's like a paradox because the companies look for awesome people however they has a, a average process so the the, the interview process in the Google e company like this is able to find you on that range. Sometimes if you go higher than that expectation, you're not able to fit there. And that's terrible. I know. Uh, the methodology, the, the way they did, they think only in the average in here. They don't think people who has outages or any kind of... Uh, think it's off of the normal people they believe so my whole point here is uh, we as humanity in software engineer we don't know how to interview so if you're gonna receive a no it's okay to fail also it does not means anything right now we have trainings around how to pass on the fan, co fan companies I'm not saying the people who work there is useless. Those people are important. My point is the, the interview process sometimes does not mean anything. So your career life is better than the interview process. So if you don't go for some reason, it's okay. Try another time. Do the process, do the training, how to pass. Yes, and uh, this is a very valid point, Otavio, because even people who have, I don't know, I, I know that sometimes uh, years of experience doesn't mean that you would be uh, above the, the average, but for example, people who have 15 years or 20 years of experience, they do the interview on those fan companies and they don't pass. And they don't pass because they didn't practice those specific skills. For example, for Google, I know that the interview, they will ask you about graphs. They will ask you about searching algorithms. And they have a couple of requirements. So you have to communicate clearly during the interview. And you can't use an IDE. And you can use whatever language you want. But for example, if you're coding in java you have to remember uh every single instruction you are coding and you have to make it compile and you have to run it so in the text block so so uh are you going to do that in real life 
No. <laughs> Nobody compiles code in whiteboard, right? And the point is, nobody knows how to do it, how to handle an interview. It's a tough process to the company and to us. Uh, of course, writing a code after you day working, where you are tired, you were a did a lot of job, is not the best way. Uh, do a whiteboard, of course, it's a terrible idea. I don't know who gave this idea, maybe from the university. But in real life, nobody codes in the whiteboard. It's a super idea. Uh, okay, let's do a test and answer me in one week. Come on. Uh, you're going to write a code where you will take the trash after that time. So you waste your time and the company's time. The point is, we did not find a good way to do interviews until the moment. Everybody will tell you, no, no, the good software is the fast job uh, software, but come on. The good software is the software that where everybody is able to understand. The good software is the, is the software where everybody is able to, to write documentation, to write tests, to be more adaptive to, to, the, to the evolution of the system. Don't blame me. It belongs to agile methodology. Uh, the whole point is the interview process sucks when we did not find a good way to do interview. So you are much more valuable than any uh, interview process company. That's for sure. And I know that's, um, that's very important for you to say that, Otavio, because I know this process is very frustrating because many developers are not, uh, I mean, and I myself also, I got frustrated by not passing in interviews. And that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that you are a bad software engineer. Yes. It means that, okay, you didn't know the rules for that specific interview game. Now that you didn't pass, you make some mistakes. Okay, now we are better. But it doesn't mean that you're a bad software engineer. It just yes. means that you didn't pass in that specific game. And once I said that, once you, uh, you remember the feelings where you do not pass and you do not receive feedbacks about why. Stop it. When you do the interview, fix it. So review somebody codes. They did it for free for you to check if the person is available to go your company. So uh, be thankful for this person. Stop one hour and explain why this person did not pass on your exam, on your process. In a respectful way to make more valuable and listen to that person because respect matters to the both sides. So it doesn't matter if you are a company, it doesn't matter if you are a candidate, both must be respectful uh, on the process. That's extremely important because many companies, I know they give, they do the interview and they won't even give uh, the feedback and then developers don't know where they made a mistake and they don't know where to improve so it's like you said it's a lack of respect i think uh like at the very least the company has to give a feedback yes so i mean not the company if you are if you're part of any process review don't let somebody to have the same feeling that we had Raise your hand and ask, hey, this person did not receive a feedback about his code. Somebody needs to do it. Shall I? Can I do it? May I can may I do it? But don't let people if not answer or be respectful for that person. Remember, he spent his free time to try to pass on your process. It's respectful to you answer that somehow. 
Uh, the second advice, code is amazing. I love to write code. However, it's a smart, a small part of your job as a software engineer. Understand what's going on. Understand the client because to the manager. Uh, once you got the opportunity to become a senior, share what you know with more early career people is part of your job as well. Uh, right now, there is no way to, okay, I am here, you know what? I'm gonna put my half on, I don't care about anybody else, and I, I, I they will deliver my job, and I don't care. Um, it is not this way anymore. So, code is a small, a small part of your job. Understand the context, share what you know with colleagues, uh, show that you care about, and try to help understand and take the business part of your job. So, okay, why are you doing it? I, I know you're doing code, but for, for what? For why? In our, what conditions? How your company makes money? Why? Because if they pay your salary, you need to make sure the money keeps going, get in. Otherwise, you will be the layoff person. Yeah, uh, Otavio, you mentioned so many times, understand the context, and I, I see that, I noticed, this is extremely important. The more you grow in your career, again, understanding the context becomes more and more important. And I think this is very connected to understanding the big picture as well. So what suggestions would you give for software developers to understand better the context and the, the big picture, because I know this is very difficult. I mean, you have to understand about what's going on in the server sometimes, or what's going on in the database, or who is the team that handles this production problem, or, you know, there's a lot of things to understand the big picture. So what advice, because, and, and sometimes there isn't enough documentation. It, it becomes even more difficult. Yeah, but do the exception. Write documentation. Uh, in Apache, we learned where if somebody teach you, one way to say thank you for this person is to write down what you learn. Uh, be closer to the business part is one advice. And you write down and make sure that everybody has the same knowledge that you have. And trust me, when you show your knowledge, it does not make you useless. The opposite. The everybody will count you more because you trust you more. So, don't be selfish with your knowledge. Share as much as possible. Help as much as possible. Okay, they are bad people. Don't worry. The person who is useless and who does bad things, he's the wrong, wrong person. And go ahead. The advice number three uh it was my mistake software is for people with people and around people there is no way to get, to get out of it and as much you help then i mean the user the engineers the manager the organization um more you will increase your career okay uh you are senior in your company, so do onboard process. Share what you know. Everybody you know him, you will know you because of that. Uh, of course, I'm not the best engineer in the world. There are much people better than me. However, they usually don't care to explain and share what they know. Right? And because of this, 
He is a smart person that nobody is able to touch. Or is, is a kind of scared of talk with this person. So be a, an accessible person. Be a, a nice person. Be a gentle person. If you can help a person, do it for it. Uh, another device is have a balanced life. I love soft engineer. I enjoy to study, to read books, to write books, any kind of thing. But have a family time, a relaxed time, a hobby, or anything outside the code is also important. It does not it does not mean that uh, you will be uh, able or sometimes work on the weekend to do a conference on weekends. Sometimes it will happen. The point is, don't try to do that every single weekend. If you have a routine to learn, to memorize, to do the documentations, or to learn new path, is okay. But don't focus 100% of your life on the job. You are not your job. That's a mistake that I, that I that I that I did, and as you learn to reduce at it. I mean, being a software engineer is one thing that I love to, but it's not me. It's a part of my life. It's not my complete life. And then don't do this mistake. Okay. Work hard on smack what happened, but play hard. Enjoy your life. Stay with your family, your friends, colleagues, and so on. Uh, uh, the next one is routine. Uh, try to have a routine to have a balance in your life. As I said, and the last one, also I said about the mistake on the tech, tech side. Learn one thing that's tough. To forget somebody else, I uh, at least I can say on my perspective. Is much easier than forgive yourself and try to forgive your, yourself about the mistake that we did. And again, it's a it's a it's an issue that I still handle with it. It's tough. I mean, I for me, it's much easier to forgive somebody else than forgive myself. And try to forgive yourself. Understand that you are human. You are, you're going to do mistakes in your life. And it's okay. And move forward. Just try to don't repeat that mistake. Uh, think twice before you do any kind of action. But some, even when you think too much, it will appear. So be okay to forgive people and also forgive yourself. And that's all I have today, Hafa. That's awesome. That's really good content, Otavio. And uh, I think those last uh, points, I think I was guilty on this one as well. I was putting my whole life on software development and I was forgetting about the other part of life. <laughs> and I noticed, okay, this is a big mistake because uh, other like otherwise, what's the point of life if you just do one thing and that's it? Nothing else matters for you. Um, so that's an important lesson. And the paradox of that is that uh, if you have also some quality time with your family or if you do your hobbies, you're gonna be even more productive. You're yes. gonna have better ideas. Do agree with you. So. Um, it's definitely better to uh, have fun as well, uh, have quality time with your family, um, travel, you know, uh, do a hobby you like. There's so many things you can do. So uh, definitely, this is a very good lesson. And that's all for it. I know. Uh, I usually do uh, tech stuff, 
but once it's a closed session, why not talk about myself? It's tough uh, to show it publicly, but at least it's a closed room, so so it's not a huge deal. But my whole point is, uh, we should be more open to talk about the mistakes that we did. Uh, yeah, should we yeah. do it more often? Especially. Just... Go ahead, sorry. Especially as engineer, because we we are living that moment uh, because of that. Yeah, I think this is extremely important because. Like what I just said, everyone will make mistakes. That's a fact. Uh, and the more you do, the more mistake you're going to make. An important thing is when you make a mistake, you learn from it and um, you don't make this mistake anymore. The problem is if you make the mistake and you continue on making the, this mistake, then um, you want to grow. So it's important to learn from your mistakes. Yeah. So better said, yeah. awesome. I should see. Yes, Pedro. It's a, a several mistakes, and sometimes we, for some reason, we, we don't have time, or I don't know why the conference does not like these kind of topics about the mistake that we did in the past. Yeah, and I think those topics are the ones that we. Uh, learn the most yes usually you are i clear with you i mean why you struggle with and why not and things like this are super important yeah so everyone do you have any questions for otavio uh, pedro boris eduardo marco lob have any questions to Otavio about career or about software development or uh, architecture, whatever you want to know, open source. Open source is, um, Otavio is the guy to talk about open source. So um, if you have any questions about maybe how to get started in open source code, anything like that. If you don't have any questions, um you're gonna miss out an opportunity to talk to Otavio. Uh, anyway, it was so, amazing to talk with you guys, uh share knowledge and mainly share the mistakes. Yes. And learn for it. Okay, oh okay. Uh that much multitask is asking, please. Talk about Staff Plus Engineer. Oh, yes. Uh, Staff Plus Engineer. Uh, is a kind of new career path around software engineer. So we had impression to, OK, you become a senior. And the unique path was to move for a manager. It was the first step, however, it wasn't good, especially because sometimes we lost the best engineer to got a terrible manager. Then we moved to Y career where we have the experts and then a manager. Doing this way, it was good because we, we, we were able to keep the an expert. However, this expert was too far from the strategic point of decision. And right now, everything is around technology. The technology itself is a strategic, strategic resource. So the, the, the point is right now, the step plus engineer is the, the Y birth 2.0, where uh, this engineer, is more closer to the executive decisions. He is more able, she is able to help more or more often about that decision. Okay? And the staff plus engineer was born because of that. 
So it's a person who's able to take more strategic resources and decisions and be closer to the, the decision takers. And he might be a decision taker as well. And there is a wonderful book, The Self Plus Engineer, The Leadership Beyond the Management Track, where we lost on COVID cover it in the nice way, especially because he did several interviews process uh, around. He went to several companies and then put together why we should care about staff engineer path and if you if your company doesn't have how to apply or if your company doesn't care how to switch to another company it's happened right some companies still want to keep the past and what can i say so briefly is staff plus engineer is one uh, post senior engineer area where you are able to be closer to decisions. Therefore, you are close less, you code less to help more, to coordinate more. But it does not mean that you will lose your engineer skill or your engineer power. That's awesome. Um... I also see a comment from Pedro here. I saw Bruno talking about it, but how to start an open source project? Uh, first, find find one thing that you enjoy, a product that you enjoy to join the main list. Okay, join the main list, email list or Slack list. Introduce yourself. Uh, based on that. Uh, start to read to do wh whatever people does like does not like to do, but it's important like tests and documentation. It's hard to refuse tests inside a code. Hey, took I cover more your product. Nobody's able to say no, no. I don't want to have more tests. Oh, okay. I don't want to make the documentation cleaner. It's hard to refuse a good documentation. It's hard to refuse uh, a good, a more test. Uh, because usually people go to the product to, to suggest new features. But remember, suggestions is amazing. Idea is amazing. However, if you put a new idea, ideas in, in the product all the time, you'll be harder and harder to maintain. The, the easiest part is to create. The hard part is to maintain. Uh, Marco is also saying here, any chance to get uh, the notes from Otavio? Yes, I share it to you. Awesome. Thank and you. WhatsApp and also on the stream yard. Okay, I'm going to share. <coughs> Oh, in string art as well. Okay, that's great. The issue yeah. in in string art is because it's not formatted. It's okay. Let's put here on the. Oh yeah, did you share it already? I can share it here. I can share it here. Let me share. Yeah, it's not formatted like you said, but it's the. Yeah. You can... Oh, so the text will be all broken down. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. I I yeah. will start to think about it. I mean, to write an article next year, to, to celebrate a year of open source experience market, something like that. Yeah. So I... those are the tips, and probably I will write down as an article in a presentation. Awesome. So thanks a lot for uh, the presentation, Otavio. It was awesome. I learned a lot. And thanks for sharing uh, a little bit uh, uh, about your mistakes and um, about your uh, personal thoughts. I think that's awesome um, because that motivates developers to, to become better. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye.
Bye-bye, Otávio. Bye-bye, everyone.